Welcome back to another new episode of Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. This is DC Comic Movies with our very special guest, our friend Aaron, making his debut on the podcast, along with our fan favorite, Julie. Enjoy! All right. Hello, everyone. This is another episode of Tony and the Movie Guy. And this is going to be a really fun episode. Um, I've got some friends who have hijacked the episode. Juju is back. Hi, guys. She can't get enough. <laughs> and then um, my good friend from uh, D.C., Washington, D.C., AJ, or I just discovered my good friend. That's not your name. <laughs> not not exactly, but it's okay. I like that you call me AJ. Sorry, say hi, AJ. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my name is Aaron, uh, but I do <laughs> I do go by AJ on Facebook, which is one of the avenues that Tony knows me. So he always calls me that, even though that's not your really very my good name. friend. But, AJ, yeah, my very good friend. <laughs> my very good friend. <laughs> I just threw myself under the bus. But it's Aaron Joseph. It is yeah, Aaron. So yeah. Bad. So it's yeah. No, it's totally fine. I, I don't think even mind. AJ sounds cool. I love. Love it yeah <laughs> you can call me then anyway w one thing i like about the podcast right now is um i've had a lot of my friends from like all over the country who have like shown up in town and i live in los angeles and they're like hey we love your podcast we want to come on so uh i mean you know we've gone national soon we'll be going international it's exciting i love it so yeah. uh, and you're very international yourself you and you. yenny yes i am yeah, indeed. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes we are so anyway you're my guest aj aaron mm -hmm. what, so what do you prefer aaron Okay, yeah. good. I'm going to try. Okay? <laughs> I like that you call me AJ. Although it's, I've never <laughs> called you that in Actually, like five just, years. Just say AJ. <laughs> no, I'm going to try Aaron because that's your name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Aaron um, yes. is, you know, you're a big movie buff yourself. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, go ahead and plug your brother's podcast. Oh, yeah. Because that's kind of cool. Yeah. So my brother, Neil, who I don't think we look anything alike, but apparently we You do guys look, look exactly apparently alike. Apparently we look identical. Julie knows him as yes. well. <laughs> um, uh, he has a podcast, which he does with uh, Nick and Tiago, um, are the two other guys. And the three of them have what's called Get to the Podcast with two, the number two. As in, get to the chopper. Exactly. So they, they've taken this wonderful clip of Arnold yelling get to the chopper but then it changes to get to the podcast and <laughs> it's great but um but they also talk about movies which is awesome yeah that's awesome I'm gonna check it out I mm -hmm. hope they check this one out too absolutely all right well look you and I are big fans of the uh the DC movies absolutely so we picked that as a topic the biggest of fans yeah well what's really funny is Aaron's favorite movie is Batman Returns which I love I think that's amazing <laughs> Guys, also, so, you should know really quick, Aaron's wearing a Batman shirt. <laughs> oh, it's is. a white button-up with the Batman logo all over it. So yeah. there you go. Yeah, he came dressed and ready. Super fan. I also have a Batman tattoo. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Where is it? It's right here on my left arm. Oh, it's on his and inner it's, thigh, it's, people. No, his it arm. Is, <laughs> <laughs> inner thigh. Woo! He just pulled down his pants to show us. <laughs> it, it, is, um, it, is a tribal, it is a tribal bat symbol. And uh, this oh, one cool. is actually from The Dark Knight. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of tattoos, but yeah. I don't have any Batman tattoos. So you're so. an uber fan. Yeah. I'm beyond. Yeah, okay. so anyway, we, we picked this topic. I thought it would be really uh, fun because I'm going to let you go hog wild on Batman Returns, well, which I think is such an interesting choice. I won't say I hate that movie, but it's definitely one of the interesting ones. Right. So I'm going to love your take on it. <laughs> you know, one thing I just have a comment on this, Tony, is that I listened to some of your podcasts previously, and even though you are a critic of movies, you are not critical of movies. Thank you. You love movies movies that's right so it's like even though you know i'm listening to him and you know even when he doesn't agree with yenny or like you know they're talking about a certain thing that, which we are going to talk about justice league oh today. yeah we're gonna get into it. it um you know he's like he's like well you know it wasn't for me yeah. <laughs> you know but that's the extent of his critical Ex you no know, he's never gonna tear a movie down and that's one of the biggest reasons why i did this podcast that's why i do my own reviews because I, I can't stand critics. They take themselves way too seriously. It seems to me like their goal is to just crap all over any movie. And you know what I think? The crappest movie made 
is an art form in itself, the fact that it got produced from start to finish. <laughs> Best, crappiest movie. <laughs> well, yeah. And, I mean, you, you were talking about, about that yesterday or last podcast with um, the disaster artist. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Tommy Wiseau. And now they've made a, a film about it the that's room. critically acclaimed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So The Room is the terrible movie, but now it's kind of, I mean, Tommy Wiseau is kind of a genius if you think about it. And mm -hmm. now James Franco is possibly up for an Oscar nomination Which, playing Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> it's just mind boggling. Yeah. But, but it's still very um, fascinating and it, and it just shows that, you know, there really is no such thing as a bad film. That's right. And I really believe that. So I appreciate that. And you can see the kind of tangents we go off on. So mm -hmm. that's why I try and reel it in, but it's great. So look, I, I love having you on this podcast and Juju, you're the backup, um, <laughs> which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to do is Aaron and I, we're going to take a deep dive on all DC movies. So I'm a huge DC fan. And here's something else I'll tell you. There's a big rivalry with like Marvel and DC. It's okay to love both. I love both. <laughs> I love both too. Yeah. And if, I, if I'm really being honest, my second favorite superhero um, is Spider-Man. Yeah. Well, I, that's funny because it's Batman, Spider-Man, Wolverine. Yeah. Probably my favorite sure. ones. Yeah. You know, Wolverine. Amazing. As long as we're being honest, I get them confused between what's DC and what's Marvel. Which we will, we will keep you on <laughs> so the same we'll page. Keep me on the same page. Yeah. Okay, yeah. guys. Well, see, I'm going to do a whole episode dedicated to Marvel. And Marvel obviously have a much more polished and successful uh, MCEU, the Marvel Comics Expanded Universe. We're going to discuss in this episode, which is going to be kind of interesting, every film adaption of a DC comic character. So we're going to go through them all, and you'll see that will kind of culminate in the quote-unquote DCEU, which hasn't really taken off the way it wants to go. But again, it sounds like you and I are going to have some nice uh, debate sure. on that. Yeah, Aaron, yeah. So well, I look forward to yeah, that. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think that there's still a lot of room for growth, but they'll never, DC is never going to be able to achieve what Marvel has accomplished in the last 10 years. I right. mean, the quality of films, the the amount of amazing talent that they've gotten involved in these films, um, you know, and how they're they're interconnected is, is well beyond, I think, what the DC universe is, is really just even c capable of doing. Well, Marvel struck gold and they built something that's worked. It's just worked. Um, I don't, I haven't lost hope for DC because they still have the best characters. They really do, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. Um, here's one thing we haven't even mentioned, guys. It's 2018. Oh, I yeah. Know. Happy New Year, guys. <laughs> New Year. Yeah, woo -woo. So this is the first episode of the new year, 2018. Wow. Do you guys have fun on New Year's Eve? Oh, I saw you on New Year's Eve. We, we were, we were all together on New Year's Eve. <laughs> well, if you remember, I don't remember much about Tony doesn't movie. remember much about that night. It Guys, he had time. a good time. It was, it was a, good time. a good time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, good. So are we ready? Yeah, yeah let's do all it. All right, let's so fasten it. your seatbelts. Um, we're going to go through um, all the DC films, okay? Um, cool. What we'll start with, and yeah, look, this is going to be kind of interesting. So Justice League came out in like November, which was kind of the culmination of you know the the dc universe and unfortunately kind of tanked at the box office and that's what this will kind of go into but i want to kind of rewind and go way back so um, starting from like the first one well yeah so i don't know if you even know this so this was kind of revolutionary for comic book movies 1978 richard donner's superman with christopher reeve yeah now when i was a kid because i'm not as young as i want to be I remember that movie. I remember they made uh, Christopher Reeve made four Superman movies. Have right. you seen them all, Aaron? I have seen absolutely none of them. Okay, I've good. seen one. Bonus points to Julie. Bonus points to Juju. <laughs> Which one? The one with Lois Lane. <laughs> she's in all four she's, of them. Yeah, she's, <laughs> okay. I know. I know that much. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about this briefly. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, we'll move on. Okay, <laughs> Aaron's like. So I just want to. I just want to clarify. Superman is not my favorite superhero. But he is so, DC, and he is DC. So that's part just to clarify why I'm not. It's I'm okay. not familiar with the superverse, Superman verse, and no judgment. But they are DC comics, and here's the thing. Um, number one. No Superman has been better than Christopher Reeve. Even people like, look, you're, you're nodding and you guys aren't even huge fans. And oh, have seen I, don't, I don't agree with that, but continue. Really? Okay. Yeah. Christopher okay, good. Reeve we'll talk was about a dreamboat in his heyday with, with the Superman movies. And he portrayed um, Clark Kent very well. Is Cavill your favorite? 
No, I actually liked Brandon Ruth from no. Sarah. Oh my god! No, no, we're gonna get there. We're this is get amazing. There. I love this. Mm-hmm. Oh. And, okay, and when I said I did, I hadn't watched any of the Superman movies. To clarify, I meant Superman the original film, the original. Superman one, two, three, and four: The Quest for Peace. Okay, I'm excited for this. <laughs> I liked him, by the way, Ruth. So mm-hmm. we'll get there. Okay, um, but you're wrong. Christopher <laughs> Reeve is he epitomized Clark Kent and he epitomized Superman and also Margot Kidder who unfortunately that actress went batshit crazy in real life and then Christopher Reeve unfortunately he had a horse freak horse accident and, and was paralyzed and, yeah. and died um but Margaret Kidder, to me was also the best Lois Lane there's been um and Gene Hackman was Lex Luthor and freaking Marlon Brando was um what uh, uh, Jor El the, yeah. the father? Mm-hmm. So uh, look, oh. the original. I, I'm not going to go too long on this because, as Aaron said, he he wasn't a huge fan of the original okay. one. But Superman was groundbreaking. Um, I mean, just think of the the John Williams score. You know, Amazing. The, the yeah. Superman oh, score. I'm Can very anyone pun that? that? No. Um, dun, dun, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Uh, well, no, I don't know. It's, dun, it's dun, like, dun, 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 dun. No, no, is that Indiana that's Jones? Definitely well, not. Nah, it's nah, very. Nah, nah, so nah, I just nah, would like to point out that it is very similar to Indiana Jones. You guys can't tell, but I'm conducting Tony right now. You know what? Yesterday I remembered it perfectly, and I was like humming it to myself in the bathroom in preparation for tonight, and now I've totally forgotten it. So music for me does so much more in film than even dialogue sometimes you know oh, yeah. sometimes music is what tells the story and I'm going to talk about that a lot when we get to Batman but um, you know I, with the Superman films that is really the only aspect of the films that I really connected with of the original um, four films okay. because you know again like I, I did not enjoy Superman as a character so even if I even if I was like it was on I wasn't watching it and I love movies That's <laughs> so interesting. It, was like, it just was something that you know I guess I just was like oh I hate that character so wow. I just didn't watch it, but I love the original theme. Yeah. I love that John Williams was involved in that. Um, you know, and of course it is very similar to Star Wars and to yeah. Indiana Jones, which are amazing films. So, you know, I did appreciate that, but yeah, I, I just didn't enjoy the films, but anyway. Yeah, well, look, I mean, Superman, the original one, is that film is like deemed culturally significant in, in the Congress library. Well, truth, justice, and the American way. I mean, yeah. this, is, this is America's hero who, exactly. you know, I mean, it's one of the first ever real comic book films it really was so it's kind of iconic and and exactly the theme is iconic um although we've forgotten it but um (laughs) but it's a great film and then they did superman 2 um which what most fans of superman 2 will remember is terrence stamp as as general zod Zod, neil to zod yeah you know um i i love those first two Superman 3, when I was a kid, I loved because it had Richard uh, Pryor was in it. And it went kind of... (laughs) He's um, funny. It went a bit zany and comical. I do remember that that was a comedy and that it it actually uh, reminds me a lot of um, uh, Thor, Ragnarok, how they did that with the third Thor film, which I thought was interesting. But anyway. Yeah, well, I loved Richard Pryor when I was young and I actually really enjoyed it. That one now doesn't hold up so well um and then they did superman 4 quest for peace which was fucking atrocious oh. and basically killed the franchise um with Whoopsies. you know and then unfortunately christopher reeve had his accident in real life so it kind of died yeah um so that's the original four superman four um okay and then the so, brandon routh one came next well well no well, see gonna... what what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go through it kind of in chronologically time sequ- oh, no, okay time sequence okay so, so what was the next, next one in dc movies which was this is what most people remember as like the groundbreaking comic book movie but that's why i wanted to mention that it was actually superman first was in 1989 tim burton's batman so don't worry we're getting to your favorite <laughs> movie very soon we're almost there <laughs> <laughs> so Here's what's funny about Tim Burton's Batman to me. Um, did you guys see that in the theater when it came out? So I was not, not born yet, I don't believe. <laughs> 1989? Well, 89? I was two. I'm not Sorry. that old. I was two. Okay, well, I was like <laughs> 11. No, I was like 10. I'm not that I really, old. I really thought it was 87, but yeah, that 89. sounds right. 89, yeah. Yeah. 
89. Because Batman Returns was 92, I believe, and I was five. Right. And I did see that in the theater. Oh, wow. And That's I remember That's probably that. why you remember it and love it so much. Oh, I love it so much. We've talked about this, remember? Mm -hmm. Watching a movie in a specific period of your life, and that way it really has a profound effect Absolutely. on you and stays with you. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting that Star Wars Batman was like Returns that is your well. favorite movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same for me. Yeah. Star Wars touched everyone. Okay, good. So let's talk about Batman real quick. Um, I So I remember that ex uh, explicitly, and it's so interesting and Fucking hell, it makes me feel old. There was, well, there was, there was no internet then. So when Michael Keaton got cast as Batman, it created an uproar. But the, people only could complain about it like in newspapers and things like that. There was no internet. Had he already done Beetlejuice at that point? Exactly. So he oh, was just okay. known as like that Beetlejuice guy and like wacky. this wacky comedian. Mm -hmm. And he was cast as Batman, you know. The funny thing is, is it really worked. And I don't know if this is a fun fact. I don't know if you know this. He got paid a fraction of what Jack Nicholson got paid as the Joker. Mm. Uh, Jack Nicholson was the star. And his deal included him getting some huge amount of the back end profits of that movie, royalties, which yeah. then became a massive pop culture phenomenon back now, then. Now, it is quite interesting to note, and again, this is something we're going to talk about a little bit later, but, um, you know, in, in many ways, in my opinion, the uh, Dark Knight trilogy um, is really more about the villains than the hero. To some um, degree. Yeah, yeah. So, so it is interesting that you say that because, you know, in, in a lot of ways, when you watch the original Batman, you feel like you're watching the Joker, not Batman. That's kind of true. I don't yeah. disagree with that. And we'll, we'll talk about those in detail. I mean, certainly he was the star. Yeah. You know, Jack Nicholson was mm -hmm. you know two-time Oscar winner. Um, and he here's what's so interesting about Tim Burton's Batman. I'll just rant for a little bit if it's okay with you guys. <laughs> Go for it. I, <laughs> I saw it in the theater. Mm -hmm. I begged my dad to take me. And, and it, how old were you at that point? Like 10 yeah. or something. Yeah. And it was a like... A young lad. It was like... I was a wee lad. A and wee it was lad. like the coolest <laughs> thing I had ever seen. Yep. You know, and Prince did the entire soundtrack. He released <laughs> an entire album. Bat dance. <laughs> it was so Prince ludicrous. Prince did the soundtrack? Prince oh my God. Did I need to watch this movie oh, again. Oh, it was amazing. So there's there's an entire sequence in this film um, where basically, you know, the Joker has stolen um, Vicky Vale, who's played Kim by Kim Bassinger. Basinger. Yeah. It was amazing. Amazing. And so has, has <laughs> basically taken her hostage and he's walking around um, this uh, art gallery with her and, you know, being very dramatic and, you know, whatever. And they're playing the Prince song and he's wearing all purple and they're throwing <laughs> yeah. paint all over the paintings. And I remember, <laughs> even as a kid, and I've rewatched this movie several times because, again, the next movie, the sequel to this film, is my favorite. Not this We're film. We're going to get there, Aaron. Not this film. But I remember thinking to myself, even as a kid, like, what? is going on <laughs> like why is this happening like <laughs> in well, the middle of the movie so let me say that at the time <laughs> that film was incredible it's kind of like a time capsule it makes me sad a little bit because i remember trying to rewatch it a year or so ago and i was like some scenes were fun but i was cringing a lot yeah. it is so corny Oh it boy. is so, so bad. zany, and quite a lot of it is quite terrible. I still enjoyed Jack Nicholson, and I did like certain parts of it, but it, it's really interesting. It's a film that doesn't age so well. It doesn't really hold it up. It did not hold Look, up. Look, some people love it still, so I don't want to upset listeners. That's just my opinion. Um, but I'm just saying, so at its time, it was amazing but now as a batman movie no i mean i'd rank it very low mm -hmm. um you know but jack nicholson until heath ledger came around no one thought um that performance as the joker could be topped you know um and he's got that great line you know what is it have you ever danced with the, with devil, the devil by the pale moonlight, moonlight. Yeah, yeah. Moonlight. moonlight yeah moonlight have you ever danced with the devil by the pale so remember in the film he doesn't act, he doesn't actually say it no he does no, say he, it. Does. he does say it at the very when end when he shoots the kid because in this film they make him the murderer of Bruce Wayne's parents as well but, which but is it's a they made the Joker it, the it's murderer it's actually a different actor who does that scene because it's supposed to be a young Jack Nicholson oh, so a different right. actor says the line and then at the end of the movie he, he says that. it to Batman yeah. who then re realizes that all along this is the one this yeah. is the guy and that's you know that's something in Batman that's, that's done right. that's over true. and over and it's yeah, reiterated the death of the parents. Gone over the murder, and, yeah. Oh my god, it's like Ugh. every single movie almost they do a little, you know, homage to this moment. They do. That that inspires him to become They've overdone vigilante. it a bit too much now. <laughs> and exactly. actually it was incredible to see that 
in Tim Burton's Batman, Absolutely. but now it's been done so many times. Do you remember Michael Keaton's voice as Batman? Mm -hmm. I am Batman. How, how does he say it? Do you remember? Uh, well, I mean, you know, he's... Hi, I'm rough. Batman. <laughs> no, it's it's kind of it's yeah, it's like a little it's a little rough, but it's it's not as it's not, not quite Christian as, Bale Batman. Yeah, it's not quite Christian Bale bad, but it's I'm like Batman. yeah, yeah, it's like it's like I'm, Tony. I've never heard your voice go that low. <laughs> how do you how do you know what I'm looking? Yeah, like, it's like that. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's, it's just it's just rough. rough enough that you're like he's trying yeah. to make it hard for you to know who he is. Because Batman's, you know, his identity is his identity, and he doesn't want to give it up. Bruce Wayne, obviously, yeah. um, but it's not quite as ridiculous as Dark Knight, which again we're going to talk about. Yeah. Well, are you ready? Because we've arrived. To your Batman favorite Returns. One. To Batman Returns. Your okay. favorite movie of okay. all time. So look, I'm just going to say something. Aaron's eyes just lit up. So I'm going to say something <laughs> first. So Tim Burton directed Batman. It became an absolute box office sensation. Um, I mean, at that time, it made like $400, $500 million, which at that time was a lot of money. So Tim Burton was basically given like carte blanche, which, you know, that's a fancy word for like full authority like do to want. basically do whatever he wanted. So when he directed Batman Returns, and I distinctly remember this, which is funny that you saw this when you were five, it was much darker. The tones were much darker. That film scared the shit out of me when I was, <laughs> and I was probably like 13. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I always remember Michelle Pfeiffer um, as, as Catwoman. Obviously. She, she was incredible. She was so fucking sexy as well <laughs> and christopher walken was so like batshit crazy as the bad guy and then danny devito legitimately scared the shit out of me as oh the my penguin. gosh i actually thought <sighs> yeah that's how his hands were the little flipper fins yeah. and his teeth like yeah. i was like where did they get this guy but I have so much to say about this guy. outside of that i can't fucking stand that movie i'm sorry so over to you, okay, Aaron. Okay. So the first, thing, the first thing I want to say about this film is that Tim Burton did not want to produce a sequel. He did not want to make another film. Is that right? true? He did not. And so what happened oh, is he you're right. He was so, the, the film was so successful. Right. And, and from the beginning, he had told Michael Keaton that he did not want to bring him back as Batman because he didn't want to do another Batman film. That would be silly. And, and it would take away from the original film, which he felt was a masterpiece. He's not like a sequel kind of person. He really isn't. He I mean, he's then, done, especially. he did the Alice in Wonderland sequel, which didn't do very right. well. And then... Um, a couple of others, but but yeah, much, yeah, yeah. More, more or less he's not into sequels because he doesn't believe that they contribute to the original storyline and often take away, which right. I generally um, agree with in, in the case of Tim Burton. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, typically his sequels haven't been as good as the original. Right. That's just my opinion. So anyway, but, um, you know, so, so, so getting back to the point, there, there were many screen, uh, what's the word, screenplays that had been being thrown around for this film, and um, he just wasn't biting. You know what I mean? He didn't like the direction they were taking and where they were going with the storyline. Um, and in fact, the the film itself evolved as they were filming it. Um, you know, there were some edits made to the film. Uh, for instance, you know, they actually brought uh, Michelle Pfeiffer back after they had completed wrapping, um, you know, filming the film to do the scene where at the very end, it kind of, you know, the camera pans up to the moon and then you see her head pop up oh, because yeah. they wanted to give the illusion that there was an attempt to, you know, keep the storyline going of a Catwoman and Batman. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But there was, there was so much about the film that um, was not originally part of the concept of the script. And, and, and I think that may be why perhaps you felt like it didn't, come together i don't i don't know really what your feelings are but like i need to re-watch <clears throat> it um i i remember it when it came out and as i said it just scared the bejesus out of me it was, <laughs> it was really dark and creepy very and then i remember watching a few tony. years ago and it was kind of in the same camp as the first one where it was just too corny and like the the sets and the costumes and stuff were just so bizarre and out there but look the floor is yours i want to hear about your love of this movie okay, so just, i love that it's your favorite movie by the way i it really is, do it is not just my it's not just like a good movie it's like my favorite Why? movie. Tell us. I think it's just because, you know, I can, there are certain movies that, um, you know, you can watch once and you're like, that was a good movie, but you don't really have any intention of watching it again or you couldn't, you don't really enjoy watching it again. Right. right? Yeah. This is a film that I can literally, any time of day, any time of year, no matter how many times, can watch and enjoy just as much as the how very first have time. You seen it? I don't even know. Millions. Millions of times. Like, I love I <laughs> don't know. Millions, I literally. So what is it? <laughs> literally. What is it? Literally, I say that. Literally. <laughs> have you literally seen it a million times, <laughs> Aaron? I would... would I would wager yes. Um, I, but by that, you probably mean like 20, 30, 40, 50 times, which is a lot. 
four million. Few or hundred. Mil- or millions. Or millions, <laughs> um, literally. <laughs> yeah, so if I could watch it once a day, every day, I would. But, That's amazing um, to me. But but so just to, to get what back to... What do you to, enjoy about it the most? Um, well, okay, so we, we, you know, I mentioned earlier how music does such a... Uh, it is so important to me in film because, you know, when you're, when you're watching a movie and you're really into it, you know, um, often the music is something that um, isn't... Uh, it's not it's not necessarily a character for you. You know what I mean? And I firmly believe that music should play a very significant role in a film because it should act as though it is a character Absolutely. of the film itself. So music from the very integral. beginning, the moment this film starts, you know, you have this, this very dark, gloomy sort of scenario where this, you know, couple, this very wealthy couple that are stuck up have this freak of a, a child. And that in, in and of itself is that very is so scary. spooky, I remember. Scary, right? That that they just produce this child, which is not the original folklore of, of you know, how Penguin right. existed, right? But anyway, so, you know, they produce this child and they're kind of afraid of it. So they choose to take it to, in the dead of winter, the the pond that or the the river, or whatever it Dumped is, that the goes baby. that goes into the sewers. This is how this is how disturbed they are by this yeah. thing they've produced. That's fucked up, right? <laughs> it's so, so messed up. So you think about like. If I was a baby and I was thrown into the river that in the dead of winter that led me into a sewer and raised by penguins, what kind of person would I become? So hold on, how did the, the penguins penguin get around in the sewer? It was really cold in New York City. Was it Alaska? No, it was in, New York. In Gotham. Gotham. Gotham, which is basically kind of like New it's York. It's basically Alaska. But, but the thing that <laughs> yeah, Tim the Burton, point of this is how did the penguins get their guys? So the, Who the knows? point that, Peng, or that um, Tim Burton was trying to make is that this is a, you know, it, a part of a, the zoo, right? And the zoo had this Arctic area where the penguins would live. So that's, that's what right. justified that's the right. existence of penguins yeah. That's at all. how we wrote the penguins in. Oh, right. Exactly. And if you, if you are a lover of film, you are a lover of Christopher Walken. Right. He can do no wrong in my eyes. Look, I so, love him. I love Chris. Exactly. Walken. So 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 then you've got this powerhouse of an actor coming in and in the shadows of Jack Nicholson, who again, I didn't care for his performance. I didn't care for that film, the original Batman, but you know, he is an amazing actor. You know what I mean? I'm not going to deny that. And you know, I think he has done many things in film that no one could ever recreate, mm-hmm. right? But Christopher Walken has the best line in the world from the SNL sketch. What is it? Which is what? Ring more I've cow. Got, I need more a, cowbell. I've got a fever, and there's only one remedy: <laughs> more cowbell. More cowbell. I can't do a very good Christopher <clears throat> Walken impression. Have you not seen that, Juju? No. Will I mean, Ferrell? I know Christopher Walken's voice and how he. Oh my god! You know, it's one of the best talks. sketch comedies ever with Will Ferrell doing the. the, <laughs> the, the well, like I know the, the more cowbell the, line. The, you know ding, the blue, ding, yeah, the blue ding. oyster cult song with the. <laughs> the cowboy and then Christopher you, Walken. Yeah, you, you can do no wrong in my eyes, Christopher yeah. Walken. So. Uh, you've got to check that out. <laughs> I'll tangent. watch it. I'll watch it. <laughs> I'm, right. I'm always up Back for Back to Batman Returns. I mean, I love Walken. You're right. Exactly. So then you get to this, you know, this, this, um, scenario of flash forward 20 years or whatever it's supposed to be 30 years and um batman is currently um a figure in gotham city and you have the penguin who's now this elusive sort of character who has gone on um you know without any 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 knowledge you know he's existed for quite a long time with no one really knowing who he is with all of his circus and he's developed a a gang you know what i mean of villains that that are working with him these henchmen and he has this very sinister plan which doesn't really reveal itself completely until quite you know towards the end of the film right you don't really understand how dark his intention is i love aaron's passion with this so (laughs) it's such a great movie so then go 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 Anyway, so then, you know, so then you have the the dynamic of politics. Politics is is a subject that is often hush-hush. You know, it's not something we want to openly talk about. It's not something we want to debate about because it's such a sensitive issue. You know, who are you supporting? Who are you not? So you have this this mayor of the city of Gotham, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have this businessman, this powerful, influential businessman who doesn't actually care what anyone else thinks he's going to get what he wants, right? And, so and that's that, Christopher Walken. And yeah. That's Christopher Walken. And, and that dynamic of them was something that even even as a five-year-old, I was entertained by, you know, and, and it's, it's so rare that I find, um, you know, a politician to be an interesting character, but then you have this mayor and you have this, you know, businessman. And so then the businessman decides, as a result of being coerced by the penguin, that he's going to support the penguin, right? Right, and then he, and then he, he has the ingenious uh, plan to, you know, get the penguin to run for mayor, right? Because that was not originally Danny DeVito's intention as a penguin, right? And I just want to talk about: Did anyone ever even realize that this was Danny DeVito, this actor, this this short, 
You know what I mean? Like amazing character character well, actor. He's someone I loved, and that's why it was even more disturbing. Right? To me. Because you'd never seen him do anything like this. He he's never so been a creepy. villain. He's never been yeah. scary. You know I what knew I mean? him from like romancing the stone. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Know, fun films like that. Man, when yeah. he ate that fish and like the black and uh, twins was oozing and out of his twins. shirt. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I, I loved love it. twins. <laughs> Um, so, you know, so then the, the penguin character comes up and his intention is actually to find out who his parents are so he can kill them. Right. But they're already dead. Right. right? So he's I, like, scratch that plan. Yeah, right. That. So then, so then, and I'm just going to jump to this because again, it's, it's, it's obviously everyone here has seen this film. Um, <laughs> but not, you know, but maybe they will. After you, you, I certainly Alan's hope you do. Passionate, like <laughs> diatribe. So, so his like diabolical plan, you know, which unfolds and, and you, you find this out towards the end is that he is actually intending to kill all of the firstborn sons of Gotham. What? No. This is like, <laughs> this is like. What kind of a psycho does this? Someone who had this done to himself. That's right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, but okay, so then come Catwoman. Oh my God, so Selena that's Kyle. Selena Kyle. Yeah. Selena Kyle. Michelle Pfeiffer <laughs> just dominated this role. So I remember her the most from this film. I mean, number one, she had that incredible leather cat suit. Michelle Pfeiffer. Which was, she made herself. Right. Which No, 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 no. She didn't. And, no, no. She was gorgeous. Shh. So no, here's the story. I happen to know this. Sean, I mean, in the film. Sean Young, the actress from Blade Runner, who I actually really like, was the person who was optioning Tim Burton for the role of Selena Kyle. Mm -hmm. And she became obsessed with it, that she made her own costume and would knock on Tim Burton's door in his home and try and audition for the role. Like, she went a bit crazy. Oh, I think we just meant Michelle Pfeiffer's character made her own costume. Oh, that oh, what that's what... <laughs> okay, good. Well, did you know that fun fact about... But I did not I, know that. I did actually know that fun fact. And okay, I do good. know all the fun <laughs> facts about... Anyway. I do know all the fun facts about Batman Returns. So I was just going to let you tell that story. But Thank no, you, I was Aaron. talking about the character and the scene where yes. she transforms. Yes. Into she sews quite... those spiky nails on, you yeah. know, the metal nails on. No, I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer was delicious. She was fantastic. Amazing. Yeah. And to go from being such a, like, you know, this this really meek. polite, yeah. meek, you know, mild kind of Librarian, person. Librarian, bookish Yeah, type. kind of, you know, and, and very, very intelligent, yeah. right? But still very reserved kind of character to then, you know, being um, thrown out of a window, a fucking window, yeah, excuse me, but Walk like. No, you can swear. Yeah, like. Christopher Walken's the guy who kills her, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so he pushes, pushes her out, out this window. window. She's like, what the fuck? She luckily just barely survives, is brought back to life by cats. 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 Meow. We don't, we don't know why. How? We don't know how. They magically lick her and well, she's she like, she cool, didn't I've got nine life. lives. Well, here's, here's what I took away from the scene, right? And again, you know, this is five-year-old Aaron talking, right? Or AJ. Um, you know, I, I am looking at the scene and I'm just thrown out of a window what 50 stories high whatever it is and i hit these um you know i don't know what they're called but these things that you know rafters or whatever yeah whatever they are and she's she kind of breaks her fall right oh, right right so that slows her down so she doesn't really hit with full impact she hits the ground she's out of breath but she's not dead you right. know what i mean she didn't die from this fall because of these um things that she fell through right so she lands and she's sitting there you know kind of like coming back to you know reality and she's surrounded by these cats, you right. know what I mean? These street cats. And I think something symbolic kind of just, you know, switches in her um, where a personality trait comes into play that just hadn't existed in her personality up to this point. Like from the cats, do you think? Well, it's, you, well, it's like cats are bitches. quite catty. I love that. Catty. I love that we're like seriously talking about this because this is something amazing. Dude, to I me. love that you love it. So, so I'm, this is like yours, man. Sure, the floor like, is like yours. If you're in a life or death situation, you know what I mean, and then you wake up and you see a cat, you know what I mean, and and you have a, a huge shift in your personality. I mean, it it wouldn't surprise me at all if the personality traits that you take on are of the thing that you see, the first thing that you yeah. see when you come back to life, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or, or come, come back to reality. So, you know, so she starts to take on these traits and, 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 and you see right away, you know, she comes home, she she drinks the milk, she throws the, her jacket down, she doesn't she care about anything. She bashes the light on the thing. So <laughs> everything, it's so, something everything bitch. about How the scene. How many times have you seen this, Julie? Okay, so let she, me just Julie actually loves out. this movie. I <laughs> love this movie too, of all the... Not counting the recent ones right, with I'm Christian Bale. I'm going to watch Bale. it again. Oh but God. I love it. I just watched it like a month ago. I bought the DVD. It was on sale for like it's amazing. And you liked it? 
Yeah. And I love the transformation. Michelle becomes a badass. Catwoman becomes a badass. And she's like, meow. And there's no, I don't care. I'm going to do what I want. There's no real even explanation for how she learns to fight. Right. You know what I mean? Or how she's like, how she's climbing climbing walls. Cats are ninjas. They can jump like 30 feet straight up in the air. See, I think, and it, Again, I love that we are power. so into this now. But I think that is what it, I think she kind of almost took on the she just personality becomes, of the she cats. She just becomes yeah. this. And cats are very agile. They're very, See? you know, they have Sneaky. nine lives. Yeah. Clearly she had nine right. lives because she gets shot like six times. See, yeah. And she, she falls gets, off a thing. She and... falls off of like a helicopter umbrella and lands into in cat kit- litter. In kitty litter. <laughs> Um, and she also gravel. just looks so damn good. She just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's just so everything about her role and her whip. I just, oh, I love it so bad. Also, so, let me just quickly point out her. I thought she had really good um, chemistry with Keaton. Amazing, Michael yeah. Keaton's Batman. And I was much like, this better, is believable much better when in they're my having. Opinion. I'm just nodding because I don't remember like they the do, actual they do intricate have plot details at all. <laughs> anyway, so we'll just sum up. This movie is amazing. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It's Amazing. Aaron's favorite Amazing. movie. And it's one of my favorite Batman movies. So, you've Tony, su- watch it again. Yeah, you've succeeded with one thing is because um, all the Batman movies, like the original weird ones, mm-hmm. just dropped on HBO. So, I, I'm going to watch it. Good. I'm going to watch it. Let me it. know when you watch it. I'm going to watch um, it with you. I'm pretty sure I'll still hate it, but I'm going to watch it just for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, de- he'll dedicate look, his watching to I you. I love that. I love it. So uh, that's fantastic. So that's that's Batman Returns. I, I do have one last question about Batman Returns. Because yes. this is something that a lot of people debate. So I wonder what your opinion is. A lot of people debate that Batman Returns is a Christmas movie. Oh, Do I would agree with is? that. Absolutely. What? Absolutely. And Apparently I think that, it's all I think set that around adds, Christmas. The whole, the whole film is is during the time period of Christmas. And I think that that adds so much to the storyline. The fact that it takes place in the middle of December, the dead of winter. It, there's, there's, you know, it's snowing constantly. There's that darkness of, you know, the film itself. Um, you know, Just because the there's a big Christmas tree in the center of the town square where it's happening doesn't make it a Christmas movie. I would say, no, it's not a Christmas movie. I disagree. Movie. So there we go. It's like in the way that Die Hard isn't a Christmas movie. Die Hard yes, it is a Christmas, a Christmas movie. movie. High five, Tony. Die Hard opens with a Christmas song, ends with a Christmas song, says, ho, ho, now I have a machine gun. He's going there on Christmas Eve to see his family. He goes to a Christmas party. All of this all of this happens in Batman Returns. It's Alas, just we exact. digress. Oh, oh, no, Aaron, I didn't say Batman Returns isn't a Christmas movie. Julie Juju did. Juju did. Julie, Juju. Julie yeah. disagrees with me, but she should watch the film again when, she, when Tony People watches take it. A vote. She is wrong, and <laughs> it is a Christmas film. Fine, you I can love have your opinion. Things up. But I also I love Christmas too, so so I think that in and of itself added opened you know that additional door to me. And you know you've seen I mean? that a million film. times, so you remember every detail. Of course. No, look, a okay. lot of a lot of people <laughs> debate that it <laughs> is right. a Christmas movie. So and I would agree. I thought I would stir things up and ask you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So, uh, do you mm-hmm. feel satisfied? Because I want to make sure you have enough time on Batman Returns. Yes. I mean, there. You know, I could talk about it all day, but I, yes, I don't mind. I'll give you another minute. Is there something else you feel must be? Uh, mentioned about Batman Returns oh, the, man. listeners this is Aaron's favorite film okay Aaron so really quick that. go to, skip to the ending and tell us about that when when Batman's on the thingy with the penguin thingy and then yeah tell me about the thingy the thingy with the thingy yeah, yeah. which thingy remember this, time? There's, this is an audio podcast toward the end when he, penguin <laughs> meets his demise and just oh god yeah. there's so many there's so many oh my god look, at his, look on his face now I want to hear this. I wanna, I wanna, build wait, it up give me two minutes because I want to talk for a moment about this <laughs> so so Julie alluded to the fact that the chemistry between you know Michael Keaton and Michelle Pfeiffer was really on and the moment that I think that encapsulated that chemistry the most is at the very end of the film there is a ball that happens that you know Max the Shrek, dance the dance that Christopher yeah. Walken throws um, you know, and, and, and this is this is both of them, you know, finally discovering that the other one is in fact this person, this identity that they've been fighting for the last couple like, oh of my days, gosh, what right? Are we doing? These yeah. last few days. And these two have fallen in love with each other, but they don't really know who this other person is. As their is. alter egos, Bruce exactly. Wayne and Selena Kyle. Exactly. And and, you know, not as much their their real identities, you know, their real identities, they're not as in love with each other as Catwoman and Batman are in love with each other. Right. So so there is this really fascinating chemistry that happens right there in that moment because, you know, um, Michelle Pfeiffer reveals herself as Catwoman to him when they're, you know, under the mistletoe and she says, you know, mistletoe can be deadly if you eat it. And he says, yeah. a kiss can be an even deadlier if you mean it. 
wow. this is this moment. And so they have this moment and they, they lock eyes and they're like, oh my God, it's you, it's you. And um, this song is playing called Face to Face. It was written for the I like film. how you know the song that plays Shh. at that moment. I know everything about this Carry film. Carry on. So, <laughs> you know, and, and the film only, you know, in the, in the moment, um, they decide to leave this party so that they can really figure this thing out because now they've discovered who the other person is and there's an effort on their part to like really, you know, kind of fix this, right? And then Penguin comes in and kind of, you know, stirs everything up by taking Shrek's son, right? Christopher Walken's son. Shrek? That's his name, Max Shrek. Oh, I was like, Shrek? Where did yeah. Shrek come into play? Shrek Fiona. is in Batman. Donkey. 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 Shut up, Donkey. I was like, <laughs> Shrek. Oh my God. Tony's I face was so confused. <laughs> he was so confused. Shrek? Wow. How did Shrek get in this? Okay, Mike okay. So now, <laughs> so now fast forward. And okay. This is my minute two. Um, so second minute is the moment that Penguin is dying, right? Okay. So, yeah, so he's I mean. so it's such a sad moment, right? And I don't know this. You know, there, there's not a lot of films. There's not a lot of moments in film personally where I've cried. You know, I cried for Boromir when he died in The Fellowship of the oh, Ring. Me too. I, you know what I, I mean? Cry like, a lot. funny, I only cry in movies. I don't cry. I didn't cry. It, when I don't even married. cry in real life. Yeah, but <laughs> it's so movies, sad. My eyes water. That's oh my what God. I call it. <laughs> Seriously. So, so so the moment that the penguin is shot and you know he's walking and he's mumbling and he's talking under his breath and blood's coming out of his mouth that's black the black blood the black blood because yeah. he's a penguin and so it doesn't make spooky. any sense but apparently he has got black blood you right. know and he's like and, 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 I think a lot yeah. of things don't make sense <laughs> but, <laughs> I just enjoy it but it's just a wonderful and like it's so corny because he falls and just dies very very uh, not peacefully but very dramatically mm. and the, the penguins come out from nowhere yeah. Just show up, these penguins. Is there a zoo and nearby? He falls into and they, the water. They, there is a zoo nearby, but okay. there's just randomly penguins in the sewer or whatever. <laughs> and so they literally take with their fins these mechanical penguins. I don't even. I think I assume they're penguin. They're mechanical because I don't think these were real penguins. Anyway, and they're but fins, in the mo- the movie, somehow real somehow penguins. their fins just scraping its body just kind of moves him into the water so that I he kind of that. falls into the water and then and then there's this shot of him kind of falling slowly to the bottom and the blood from his mouth is coming off. And it's like, you know, yeah, I could, kids move. <laughs> I could go, I could go on all day about what's wrong with the film, but let's talk about what's right. Well, with no, it's film. your favorite movie. I know. It's just, it's just like, it's like, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. It's just that good. Dude, you know? this is why I'm like, fuck the critics. You know, I, this is why everyone has a right to their own opinion. That's why movies are made. While one person will think a film is, you know, a total turd, another person will think will be, be so, so touched, touched by that film and think it's the greatest thing ever made. Yeah, That's what I, I mean, love about the experience of movies. This it is, is art. art. It you moves know? you either in a good, I guess it makes you smile or it makes you want to throw up. That's good. Yeah. Both reactions. Quote, turd of a movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I, no, seriously, I'm not even trying to be facetious. I mean, I loved how passionate you were. Just, I'm just so it was so it. fantastic. And you're right. We probably could have a one hour, two hour episode on Batman Returns. But we don't have time for that. Yeah. <laughs> but I love it. So are you satisfied? I'm satisfied. Okay, good. You guys got to check this out. Batman Returns. It's Aaron's favorite film. 1992. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. So we're going to move on. Okay. So after Burton left the Batman Keaton trilogy, also refused to come back. Yeah, Keaton also refused. So then it kind of went on hiatus for a few years. So I call the 90s the dark period for Batman movies. Okay, and here's why. Oh, boy. So in the mid-90s, they did Batman Forever. Now, Batman Forever wasn't terrible. Val Kilmer was cast as Batman. Um, It actually was quite successful, but it was corny. It was kind of that they the mood changed to make it kind of like zany and zingy. I think um, what really went wrong with Joel Schumacher's Batman Forever is is the fact that they're... um, there's no, uh, so so Marvel, you know, in the Marvel universe, they've done this thing where they've been able to really make you connect with the characters in a way that even though you're seeing something fantastical, it's grounded in reality. So you can see these characters, you can believe that this, this is something that really happened and, and you true. feel the emotions that they're feeling when they lose a loved one or, you know, whatever. And I mean, th- this is, you know, these are ridiculous things that we're talking about people right. with these, these magical powers and abilities and things like that. So well, Batman, so Batman doesn't have any, but <laughs> Batman doesn't have any ability. So why are we making it fantastic? Why are we making it ridiculous, right? And that's what Joe Schumacher did with the films. So even though I was very entertained by both Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, which, which we're, we'll talk about <laughs> next. What I was very right. entertained with them, Val but they Kimmer. weren't. 
Go oh, ahead. Well, but finished. they just they just weren't good films. They weren't good movies. Yeah. Okay, well, hold on. So Val Kilmer was a stud in was the 90s. Hot. He was yeah. a stud. Um, sure, that's what his, he did right. Here's what's saint. interesting. Yeah, that was a good film. I <clears> didn't <throat> hate Batman Forever. I remember you two did like the, I the song. Um, I thought it was a, and Kiss from a Rose. For, Kiss from Seal. a Rose. Doesn't this, that come yeah, the from mo- that one movie? of the mo- that is the most popular Seal song yeah. ever. Kiss one from of the a most Rose. Iconic songs that of the nineties. That That's from Batman. Kiss by a rose on the something <laughs> grave on the grave. Oh, grave. 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 I'm the grave. No, I can't sing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, that's, I always break out into. No, like I had. Song. I couldn't believe that that was from that movie. Yeah, and so okay, so you had um, also you had Jim Carrey as the Riddler, Nicole who, Kidman. Yeah. Um, who was she? She was Poison Ivy. No, or? she was the doc. She was his love interest, but she was oh, a psychiatrist. That's right. Okay, mm-hmm. and then you had Tommy. Oh, I didn't even know she was. You had Tommy yeah. Lee Jones as Two Face. I know. That's amazing. Um, right. Chris O'Donnell was uh, Robin. Batman. Robin. That yeah, was a bit Robin. shaky. Anyway, so holy rusted metal, Batman. <laughs> 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 Suffering swordfish, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Pow! Give me the shark repellent. <laughs> okay, hold on. Um, Batman Forever was kind of just a dumb, fun film. Um, Agreed. Uh, it was enjoyable. It wasn't terrible. Um, although I will admit, I haven't gone back to watch it for a long time, so I don't have much interest. Me but I will probably check it out. But we will move on. It was successful enough that they continued, but for whatever reason, they recast. Batman with George Clooney, which seemed like a good idea. And who directed Batman and Robin? Joel Schumacher. He did it too? Mm-hmm. Wow. So lightning does not strike twice. It didn't strike the first time either. I think mm-hmm. Batman, you know, Batman <clears throat> and Robin is considered one of the worst movies ever made. I was not aware of that. Is oh, that the one with yeah. Alicia Silverstone? As yes, as Batgirl. Batwoman? And it's Batgirl. most Batgirl. infamous for George Clooney's bat nipples. He right. has nipples yes. in his costume. It's so um, bad. It, and Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> as Mr. Freeze. Um, Bane. Ugh, the depiction. He doesn't even say a word. The depiction of Bane was he awful. He just says his name. Repeat yeah. it, repeats his name. Bane. Bane. Not like Bane. Tom Hardy. Wait, he's in that? Yeah, but it's his not character? Tom Hardy. It's like, yeah, the character Bane. of Bane. The character. I, is, I didn't even know that. You, you actually, I should show anything. you a picture because it's ridiculous. But anyway. It's like a comic okay. book version. So in Batman and Robin, they really just were like trying to do the comic book. Uma Thurman. It, Uma Thurman is, oh, yeah, she's Poison, Poison Ivy. Ivy. Mm-hmm. And she was terrible in it and i love uma thurman <laughs> oh come on she was so here's the thing like i, I could the i tried to watch it recently I, it was like i was scraping out my eyeball sockets i couldn't <laughs> so, even get through it again i will say so this movie came this film came out in 1997 and i was 10 years old at the time so imagine i had already seen batman returns which was my favorite film of all time <laughs> from the time that i was five until i'm now 30 um and then you know batman um forever came out didn't care for it but i was entertained so then when this movie came and i was all for it i was like oh yeah and do another batman movie maybe they'll get it right this time and i'll watch the film and i was entertained by it it wasn't a good film okay so you were but 10. i was entertained by it by then i was a wee young strapping lad of like 19 or 20 right <laughs> so that's why it was like silly what am i watching right. oh no no and batman, the man no, no no batman forever was silly batman and robin was an atrocity okay to me it was it was so bad it and i mean they try and give Arnold Schwarzenegger like a pathos and like an emotional role as well as Mr. Freeze and well I, I do love feel Arnold Schwarzenegger I do feel like it was one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's best films oh I love what? you Aaron <laughs> I'm not gonna, well name a film that Arnold Schwarzenegger has done the one with Jamie Lee Curtis okay True, True Lies, Lies. Was, True yeah. Lies was his best film uh-huh. Terminator 2 but Terminator it, the, what was what about Do his character? Not knock okay, Terminator okay, okay, okay. Two. We won't talk about that. <laughs> moving on, moving no, no, no. on. <laughs> you can you can talk about anything, by the way. No, no we're not talking <laughs> about Terminator. Of me, then. I like that. <laughs> no, because I was just like I like to me Arnold Schwarzenegger as a person as a person is just an interesting person and he of keeps being in film being Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, he's just a macho action yeah, guy. And he's, and he's very entertaining. True Lies was by far his best film and James Cameron brought something out in him that I don't think I'd ever seen. But that doesn't mean he's a good actor. You know what I mean? Right. And, and and to me, his portrayal of Mr. Freeze was probably <laughs> one of his best works of art. So I'm just I'm just leaving me. that alone and that's I'm just saying. Okay. okay. Well, I love Arnold Schwarzenegger. I do. Um, everything about Batman and How Robin. How do we feel about George Clooney? Well, see, here's the thing. It, I mean, George Clooney was just hamming it up because the whole film was ham. I like George Clooney as an actor, but he was fucking terrible. Yeah. You know, everyone, Alicia Silverstone. He didn't Silverstone, have much to work with. No, no one did the script, the sets, the costume <laughs> design. It was 
an abomination. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was. <laughs> I uh, agree. So uh, I'm not kidding. It is regarded one of the best worst movies ever made to the point where people have parties watching Batman and Robin for comic entertainment. That's true. I've heard of they that. They do. I have. Mm-hmm. I've like The Room. Tommy, like we should, we like should do Troll that, 2 and so on. Yeah, well, I think you should do ba- a series of Batman watching yeah. films. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? We'll just watch the entire, you know, legacy. Anyway, it was so campy. Um, it, it almost killed the, the Batman franchise. It really did. So, okay, good. One I'm skipping, um, which I, I didn't, I never saw, and it's also regarded as one of the worst movies ever made is Halle Berry's Catwoman. Well, which that's, is, which it's is not part of the DC universe. But it's a DC comic character. No, it isn't. Oh, it's Catwoman? not? Catwoman. So, so I will make a comment Selena about this because I don't Catwoman. believe, I do not believe we should continue to talk about this film. <laughs> uh, because Hold on, <laughs> is she Selena Kyle in the Halle Berry movie? She is not. Oh, okay, good. Then so, you're right. Yeah, I never so, saw it. So they just so, made a completely different so film. this French director who had previously only done music videos, and there's a point in the film where it actually feels like you're watching a music video, which is quite hilarious. It's, there's like a basketball game, and it's, anyway... The the character you've I, seen it. I have seen the film, and I was quite disappointed. But the, the the there was no intention of making this about Catwoman, Selena Kyle, DC Comics at all. Even oh. though this person is clearly Catwoman, right. Selena Kyle, DC Comics. So it it just really it was in it, it was an offensive piece <laughs> of art. Okay, that's. <laughs> That's interesting. Go. Well, I never saw it. And I'll, I won't lie, you know, my male hormones, you know, raging. Halle Berry was one of the most beautiful women in the world. And her in this, like, skimpy outfit, that's the only thing that interested me. And then it got absolutely lambasted. And I was like, all right, I'll skip it. And I've yeah. never gotten around well, to there, it. Well, there is another podcast that exists called um, How Did This Get Made? And oh, they, did an yeah, they did an episode. They did an episode about it. this. I encourage both of you to listen to it. That's <laughs> with uh, Paul Shear. Yeah. I love that guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They some have some great friends. people on there, yeah. too. That's a great podcast. Okay, good. So this is the dark age that we move past. So now we go into, what do you call it? Like the rebirth, the so golden the age. Renaissance. So the I have renaissance. So I have a question for you. Of the way the DC comic movies. <laughs> go ahead, Aaron. I just have a question because we haven't talked about Superman Returns. And that in chronological sequence came before The Dark Knight. Did it really? Yes. I had is it this afterwards. the Brandon Routh one? Yes. Oh lord! Are you sure? Yes. It should have. It, to me, can, it's part of the dark ages. No, then. no, no. You know what? It's okay. I believe you, and you're the guest. So before we launch into the the Nolan trilogy, which obviously is on a whole different level. Right. I mean, it is. I'm sure you're not. I mean, it's just on a different level. Yeah. Um. No. Let's talk about Superman Returns. So, okay. Um. That. So what year did that come out? Like 2004. I, I believe it was 2000. Yeah, 2004, 2005, I something like that. Could have sworn it was after Batman Begins, but it's okay. So that was Brian Singer. Mm-hmm. Who had done X Men, X Men Two, Usual Suspects? Right. So he chose not to do X Men Three, X Three, which then was done by Brett Ratner, which we're going to talk about him in a little bit. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, it, in in basically what they did is Brett Ratner, I think had had been considering doing the Superman film, and Brian Singer obviously had X Three coming up. So then he was like, "Well, why don't we swap? Because I really want to do Superman, and Brett Ratner really wanted to do an X Men film, and both of them ended up not doing well, which is kind of interesting because I think Brian Singer should have stuck with what he was good at." which was X-Men. Right. And I don't think Brett Ratner should be directed. That was his baby. But that's my opinion. Yeah, he's uh, apparently a very bad person. (laughs) But um, (laughs) whatever. Supposedly. Um, So here's the thing about Superman Returns. This is interesting because we mentioned, touched upon it earlier, and it seems like you like that movie a lot. I do, yeah. Which is kind of good to hear. Just so you know, so do I. Yeah. I really like Superman Returns. Now I'm going to turn to Juju. Have you even heard of Superman Returns? Yeah, and I saw it and I thought it was kind of like, eh. Okay. Well, here's the thing. So. It was a blip on the radar. That's what, uh, Most people forgot about it yeah. and a lot of people never saw it. So there was so much hype because there hadn't been a Superman since Christopher Reeve in the 80s. So right. it was huge. And Brandon Roth looked the part. Right. I mean, he looked Perfect. He really did. And Aaron, you're right. He's not a bad actor. He's not a bad Clark Kent at all. I actually enjoyed him. Kevin Spacey, which I know now that he's got his whole fucking scandal, but I'm sorry. I think he's a great actor. He is. Separating the person. Agreed. He was cast as Lex Luthor. I thought he was really good as Lex Luthor. And um, um, the Kate, film, Kate, what is her Kate name? Kate Bosworth. Bosworth. Was, okay, so I that's where it broke down for me. I hated her as Lois Lane, and I hated the introduction of Superman having a kid. And that whole thing. I I (laughs) thought that's where it got weird. Here's where it really went wrong. From the beginning, Brian Singer wanted this film to be a homage to the original films, which again, I didn't care for. So so this film takes place after uh, Superman 2. 
Right. So it doesn't really make sense. You know what I mean? After like Superman if you're gonna two? if what you're gonna three read, and four? It, they act as though three and four never oh, happened. On it. <laughs> right. And then they but they they are literally starting this film as though this is like a couple of years after <laughs> Superman Two. Were they even two. boning by Superman Two? <laughs> they did have sex in the in the second film, which again I didn't watch, but that's but the one I watched. Just, and he knows this detail. That's the one yeah, that but I, I, I didn't I did know that much. Oh, you're um, right. And and you know, one thing that was you're amazing is like <laughs> I know. I like, you know, I if if it's interesting to me, I'll look into it. <laughs> but um but you know uh marlon brando they they actually got some recordings of him and they were able to recreate them in a way that um you know was very tasteful you know since he had already passed at this point so anyway but 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 i i felt like you know what brian singer is really trying to do is 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 really trying to um you know show how much affinity he had for the original series while at the same time not acknowledging the ones that he didn't care for which is a mistake in hollywood you don't do that you know what i mean you mm. don't um try to make a sequel to a film that already had a sequel. Right. You know what I mean? And act as though the sequel didn't happen. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you're going to do your own iteration of a character, you do your own iteration and you homage it in the way that's appropriate by, by you know, pointing cues or maybe, you know, having having Marlon Brando still be the father. Well, also, but... way too much time had gone by. We're talking about almost 20 years. Exactly. So he need, if he, It should have been a true reboot. It would have been yeah. a great film and, it, and probably would have gotten into its own trilogy if he had intentionally made a new film. Film that had its own storyline and recreated the concept of Superman, mm -hmm. but it wasn't doing that. Yeah, so look, people should check out um, Superman Returns. It's hard to find, and uh, here's the thing. I remember this. When it came out, it was actually quite well-reviewed by critics. It just bummed at the box office. Yeah. You know, it wasn't successful, so yeah. it died, and it's a pity because... Uh, I will make a defense. I thought Brandon Routh was a pretty damn good Superman. He wasn't bad. Kevin Spacey, I thought, was a fantastic Lex Luthor. Great, yeah. It, visually, it was quite stunning. It did have some good action set pieces. I think where it, it really kind of broke down was um, Kate Bosworth, I thought, was horribly miscast. And then the whole storyline with the kid, and it was just weird. Um, I, let me just say one thing. It's not that I didn't like the movie. It's just that I had so much love for Christopher Reeve right. and how he portrayed both sides and most do superman and clark yeah. kent He's that when brandon routh came around i think superman i had my is. expectations really high for it to right. be like this new and it just didn't quite hit that standard and for because me. That's i didn't all. care for the original film yeah so that's yeah why and i, I cared it. for the original and yeah. there you didn't yeah so. no, you gave a good perspective on it aaron you're, sure. yeah. you're right they uh, to try and continue something they should have just re, you know reborn it as its own which thing. is what the man of steel has done and yeah. even though I, I i don't care for that film i feel like they they did a much better job of setting up a new storyline with new characters yeah. and making you care about them. Yeah. Okay, good. I think we're done on Superman mm -hmm. Returns. People should check it out because it's a decent film. It's certainly not one of the best ones. Um, but now we're going to talk about something that I am beyond passionate about. So Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy, to me, was like, yeah, the re Renaissance. Renaissance. <laughs> All right. uh, like the rebirth of DC comic books. And um, here's what's interesting. So Christopher Nolan was pretty um, unknown. And then he did Memento, which was a little indie movie that was huge at the love time. Love that movie. I don't think it holds up so well. That's what's so funny. I loved that film when I saw it way back when. And I, I tried haven't to seen watch it, a long time, so that's it six a good months point. ago. And I kind of, because you know, it's such a unique story told in reverse. But once you know it, it kind of takes away the appeal. Well, but the prestige is the same exactly. way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but anyway, Christopher Nolan was a great director. Batman Begins um, came out with Christian Bale um, cast as Batman. Mm -hmm. um, and what was interesting about Batman Begins for me, and I'll let you guys talk about it a bit, is Batman's my favorite comic book character of all time. He is. He is my number one for me personally. So I was super excited about this. And, and it also looked like the Batman that I always wanted, not this corny Joel Schumacher bullshit. You know, I mean, <laughs> one of my favorite comic books of all time is The Dark Knight Returns, Frank Miller, the gritty, dark Batman. So the trailer, Christian Bale, you know, he had just done a film which I had saw called The Machinist, you know, where it was this really like psycho trippy film where he had lost like 80 pounds and then he bulked up for Batman Begins. Anyway, it looked really interesting. Um, but what I found funny was when I saw Batman Begins, I enjoyed it, but mm -hmm. I didn't love it. It wasn't a sensation to me. It wasn't like, because the Batman Begins is really a, a, a origin, origin story. story. Mm -hmm. And it really goes into that in detail. I mm -hmm. love Michael Caine. I liked Killian as Al Michael Caine as Alfred. I think he's just perf the best Alfred we've mm -hmm. ever had. We'll talk about him more. I like him in the, in the other movies better. 
Um, I, you know, Katie Holmes, I didn't really like that much. Um, I don't even remember the name of the girl, the love interest. Do you remember her name? Um, Rachel Doss. Oh, good. Good, good job. Um, Killian Murphy, I did like as Scarecrow. And then I love Liam Neeson as Raz Al Ghul. Um, but you're right. It really goes into an origin story. Um, you know, it, I, I don't know. I liked it, but I didn't love it. What, what's your take on Batman Begins? So Batman Begins, I think, um, like you said, it, it, it is a wonderful origin story. But sometimes an origin story isn't what you want to see. And that's, I think, what occurred for me as well. It's, it was kind of like... You know, we know the story of Batman, and they did take it in a direction that was much more interesting because, you know, you never see how Batman came to be as good of a hero as he is. Yeah, right. you, you saw him go through the struggle of losing his family and deciding to become a vigilante, but how does he become this person who can, you know, you know, has all these contraptions and that's super smart and you is able to... You see him training with, what are they called, the shadow? Exactly, or, yeah. yeah. So this, this whole Rats group alcohol. of people... Yeah. And, and in the comic books, you know, Ra's al Ghul is this badass, you know, right. and he teaches Batman to be this way. He's a mortal. Um, this ninja. Ex yeah. Well, yeah, he's this immortal ninja. And, and, you know, and then, or whatever they call it. But anyway. Julie's got such a glazed look on her <laughs> face right now. <laughs> Continue. And, yeah, so then, you know, so then Christian Bale. I think, I think, um, one thing I do want to comment on is that after Batman and Robin had come out, I remember thinking to myself as a kid, because I was a fan of the animated series, I was like, we're out of of villains who were right. who's the villain going to be and i had never heard of raz al ghul at the time but i knew of the scarecrow so i was like oh i'm so excited it's going to be the scarecrow and then it was scarecrow um, was creepy yeah Didn't he was think? he I was, it was creepy super scary so yeah. so anyway but um you know cillian murphy just did such an amazing job even though he had a relatively small part and he did make it Is back it in, in both the Killian? second i believe it's cillian but i i Killian. don't know I thought it was Killian. Killian. That sounds about right. I'm not from there, so <laughs> yeah. Well, he's Irish. <laughs> Tony Tony would know better than me. But um, but Killian. So anyway, but, but his his role. It, it's so funny because like it was so rememberable, so remarkable. He made it back in both of the sequels That's to right. that film. Yeah, Scarecrow is in all three of them. And I didn't even roles. know his name was Scarecrow. Like, what are we talking yeah, about? Wizard of Oz. What's so remember, going on here? remember <laughs> where he would he would shoot this powder at people. They'd go into like a Give hysterical kind of um, what you know this uh, this drugged state, mm. and that's what the whole film is about. That the gas that they were they let out in Gotham oh, that caused okay. people to see to hallucinate, and so he would use this hallucinogen and spray it in your face, and then yeah. put this mask over his face, and it was very traumatizing. That's how he would control people. Yeah, kind of as like a psychiatrist, a he yeah. would use this on people and manipulate situation so anyway the scarecrow is, is such a fascinating character because that's not how the scarecrow <laughs> operated right. in the comic books or in the in the cartoon but he so is was, one of the more memorable things for me in absolutely. batman begins yeah and the most in my opinion yeah i do, i i also personally feel that liam neeson can do no wrong so right. you yeah, know liam neeson stood out to me but but again like you know morgan freeman it, it was just a wonderful ensemble cast Christian Bale, take it or leave it. You know what yeah. I mean? It is what it is. What this film did do for me is it set up the Dark Knight. Yeah, so yes. I agree with you. So look, Batman Begins, what's interesting, it came out to critical acclaim and it was a modest hit at the box office. It wasn't actually a huge hit, but it was enough of a enough of a box office success and so critically acclaimed that it gave birth to a sequel with Christopher Nolan. Mm -hmm. I think he had actually already signed on to do a trilogy. So he knew he was going to do a trilogy. But okay, good. So I, I, I'm i glad we're kind of all on the same page because yeah. it's inter a lot of people consider Batman Begins like one of the best Batman movies. I, I think don't it was think just so. a good setup. It's, it's a, and you're right, It was a Aaron, good origin it's story. It's a good origin story, but it wasn't great. So The Dark Knight, just so you know, is one of my best favorite films of all time. If The Dark Knight is not in your top 10 it's of in my best top films five. of movies, yeah. best films, you know, of all time, you, you didn't watch that film. Yeah. <laughs> well, I here's mean, also what's interesting about The we Dark can't Knight. Be friends. Yeah. Well, no, The Dark Knight <laughs> you is You can't almost... sit with us. <laughs> yeah, you don't get to go on the cool kids table. <laughs> but it's almost 3 hours long and it's one of those movies that if I see it on TV, I just have to sit down and watch, watch it. Watch it. Absolutely. Uh, th this is a true story. I have watched it three times in the last six weeks. Wow. Because it was we... on? No, it wasn't even on. I was flipping on Through like Netflix HBO or whatever. And it like... was there. So I had to watch it. Then I was on a Hulu and it was there. And, I, and, I had then, to watch I, it. and then I had the Blu-ray and I was like, oh, I might as well throw this and That is on. how I feel about Batman Returns. Yeah, Continue. Which, which is incredible. So, okay, good. So the Dark Knight is on the Wednesdays, one. Wednesdays, we wear black. Yeah, so Dark Knight is the one that I've seen probably, I don't know, I can't say a million times, but I've probably seen it easily 25, 30 times. And, and, and in the, the 
Batman universe. It is my second favorite of the Batman universe. The Dark Knight is my favorite comic book movie of all time out of any comic book movie. But as as you said, yeah, it's like one of my top five films of all time. It's a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. I can't find a single flaw with that film. So Christopher Nolan... Um, Let's talk about a few things. So number one, you got Christian Bale. I thought Christian Bale was great in it. Um, I uh, one thing a lot of people do nitpick, which never bothered me, was his voice. The I am Batman. Where is she? Oh, my wife does an amazing Christian does Bale. She? Like, where is oh, she? She'll literally go, Tony. Where are your underwear? <laughs> <laughs> where are we going for dinner? <laughs> oh my goodness. Make up your mind. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a growl, you see. Oh, it make is. up your mind. No, I can't. It's a, it's a growl. Okay. She's I'm a lady. Leave that to the Juju pros, is a lady. AKA the I am Batman. <laughs> anyway, um, it, it didn't bother me. Actually, it made sense because he basically has kind of a voice uh, synthesizer in his costume to mask his actual voice. Right. That makes and sense here's, to me. And here's what I will say about that is I watched that entire film and I got, and it's a relatively long film. It's like two and a half hours, yeah, maybe a little longer than hours. that. And I got to the end of it and, and I didn't notice that it bothered me until right at the very end. And he's talking to... Oh, I think it's Two Face. Two Face is trying to kill a little boy, try, trying to kill um, right. what's his name, Gordon. Commissioner Gordon's yeah. son, and he's doing the voice. And I'm like, You're wow, like, wait that a minute, voice, that voice is kind of obnoxious, you know? You think Let he could? They could have. They could have done a little. Well, so I actually think that um, Zack Snyder took away, you know, something from that, and then he did something great with Ben Affleck's voice for right. for the Batman and Batman mm -hmm. versus His Superman. Isn't so bad, yeah. yeah. Well, look, I mean, again, for me. I didn't care at all. Okay. Like I, I actually, I, I'm not lying. Like for the Dark Knight, I can't nitpick anything. I, it can do. So no this wrong had some me. really Perfect. good villains in it. Too. Well, that's what I'm going to say. So uh, let, let's talk about this because obviously I'm saving for last Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker because we could probably talk about that forever. And here's the thing: a lot of people put that on the spotlight, and it is incredible. But the film itself, and I'm talking about The Dark Knight, the film itself is just one of the best films ever made. The whole film is incredible, and the cast, you're right, so you've got Christian Bale as Batman. Aaron Eckhart. Aaron Eckhart as Two-Face, who I don't think gets enough credit. Absolutely. He was Ledger so completely good. overshadowed yeah. him. I thought he was fantastic. And thank God, Maggie Gyllenhaal, I'm sorry, Took no disrespect over. to Katie, Katie Holmes, Holmes, but I just, I didn't think she didn't think for the role. I thought Maggie Gyllenhaal Maggie as Rachel brought it actual amazing. emotional pathos and depth you cared. I agree, and she, she brought a strength to the character that didn't exist prior to that. I, right. I couldn't actually see Katie Holmes pulling off the the way that moment when she faces Joker and she's not afraid. And, and inside of her, you can see that she's utterly terrified, but right. she doesn't want him to know that. She'll yeah. never let this villain know that. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's it, that strength that Maggie Gyllenhaal has. It's just gives me chills every time yeah. I watch that scene. So she was fantastic in that. And then in Dark Knight is where I think um, Gary Oldman really comes into his Absolutely. own. Absolutely. Commissioner Gordon. Mm -hmm. You really care about him. And Michael Caine as, as Alfred the mm -hmm. Butler. I see. I don't remember them so much from Batman Begins. But in um, in The Dark Knight, I just I thought they were incredible. And then I do love Morgan Freeman. I just he's not from the comics. Or I don't even remember him from. What's mm -hmm. the character? Luther uh, or something? Or Luther, He's the gadget Luther. guy. The tech guy. It's yeah. just weird. So I, I like Morgan Freeman, but well, I. It see, the thing is that, really that it never connected. made sense in, in the Batman series. It never made sense that that Alfred just magically has all these abilities to build all these gadgets and right. stuff while Batman's going out <laughs> and true. saving the day. So <laughs> so they're having this um, Fox, Luther Fox, or, yeah, or something Fox, Fox, Luther, Luther Lucius Fox. Lucius, oh. Lucius, that, that makes Morgan sense. Freeman's Lucius character. Fox. So, so having this character. You no, know, that's such a good name. It must be a comic book character. I, I, it possibly, yeah. I, and we can look that up later. But, but you know, the, the fact that, um, you know, someone who worked in this aeronautics, you know, kind of department of developing military grade quality, you know, weapons and um, tactical, you know, devices and things like that. It was so realistic. You know, it makes sense that he was able to do this for Batman. And if you recall, um, there's there's a point when he develops a piece of technology that he he doesn't actually want Batman to use, and Batman chooses to use it anyway. That's right. And, so and it's like actually, a GPS that can track everyone well, in Gotham City. It, no, it sends out um, a radar. Right. Uh, not a radar. What's it called? Well, anyway, so Wave, basically like... Radio this, waves. Yeah, so he can see... Everything that's, that's going right. on from everyone's cell phone in the entire city and all over the planet, technically, right? And he's like, this is too much power too, yeah, for one man He's to like, I, yeah. I've given you something that I can't take back, you know what I mean? And you don't, you don't, you know, 
none of us deserve to have the ability to do something like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that was such an impactful moment as well. And there's just so many scenes like that in the film where, where you really, it makes you think about life. It makes you think about, you know, um, you know, as people, you know, what, what, what can we do? What can we not do? You know what I mean? It's just like, what's right, what's wrong, yeah. you know, cause there's moments in the film where, um, the Joker, he's not motivated by money or greed, all, which he's I motivated loved. by chaos, so, just chaos. He just wants to drive everyone wild. That's yeah. all he cares and about. And see them tear each other apart. Yeah. He wants to watch the city burn. And, and that is the Joker. I loved it. Let me talk about this a little bit, just because, as I said, I, I love this movie so much. And then, of course, you can yeah. put in. There's so much going on in The Dark Knight. That's what I, I love about it. I mean, number one, uh, this so this film truly was a rebirth for, for comic book movies. Um, it made the Academy, it made peop studios pay attention. It was critically acclaimed. Um, it was a smash. It made over a billion dollars at the box office. It was a nominated for eight Academy Awards. Including eight. Heath Ledger. Yeah, that is unheard. That's... I'm saving Heath Ledger for last. I mean, I could talk about him. But that performance to me is like the greatest living male acting performance to me. It's Or it's up there in like the top five, you know, like mm -hmm. Anthony Hopkins, Silence of the Lambs, you know, that kind of thing. It's, yeah. it's so good. Um, I, I, tragically, he died in real life. So... Unfortunately, that kind of propelled the movie as well, all the media attention. But it's just such a phenomenal film. Um, he won the Supporting Actor Oscar posthumously. Mm -hmm. um, but it was such a sensation just as a serious a, a movie that's so well made. I'm going to go on the tangent a bit because Jodie Foster, I mentioned Silence of the Lambs, <laughs> has been in the news a lot lately. I don't know if you've heard this because she made the statement kind of degrading and deriding all these box office Marvel superhero movies being made hmm. um and it was kind of a lot of people thought it was a bit pompous but on one hand i understand what she was saying i think she's talking about like the endless transformers movies and these just ridiculous movies that are terrible but then like james gunn who directed the guardians of the galaxy and other people have been mm -hmm. defending saying oh it's a bit you know arrogant to just say you know all this popcorn stuff is taking over hollywood because there are films superhero films that have emotional pathos and they're are grounded deep, and are deep so the Dark Knight to me is like the epitome of that. You know, it, yeah. it really is. It, it doesn't feel like a comic book film. Not at all. You and know? it is. And it's a very, I mean, Christopher Nolan, he, he, he takes his films quite seriously. You know what I mean? And his performances quite seriously. And you see that with every single actor in all of his movies. So, you know, and um, it's, it is funny coming from Jodie Foster because Jodie Foster is, is um, a very well-regarded director and actress. Two-time Oscar-winning um, actress. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and, and she has accomplished quite a lot of art, you know, in, in What's her interesting lifetime. is she'd probably make a really interesting and unique superhero movie. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I mean... And, and I think that it is unfortunate that, um, you know, these types of films are, are discarded by people like her. You know, my right. brother, my brother feels the same way. He feels like, you know, oh my God, all these ridiculous, you know, Marvel movies, they're endless. They won't stop. And I'm like, well, as long as they're good, I don't care. Yeah. Keep coming out. Yeah, you know what I mean? Most of but them when are you, incredible. <laughs> when you start making bad movies. Which then DC has quite a few of. <laughs> DC, DC's got some duds, um, you know, and we, we didn't even talk about Green Lantern. But like when you make some duds, <laughs> that comes you know, <laughs> um, you yeah, so it, it it is kind of unfortunate, but but in in this case, you know, Marvel has um, and DC have have been able to produce some really great films. Yeah, and look, I mean, with the Dark Knight, there's so much going on. You've got, I mean, you've number one, the opening. I mean, to me, it's got one of the best openings. Amazing. It's the introduction of the Joker, you know, and it's just the the way it's shot, the the music. It's the Hans Zimmer, right? Yeah, yeah. Who does the sound? Oh, it's I incredible. love his manipulation. Like, yeah, that's the way the he best. so he orchestrates this whole bank robbery, and basically everyone's got under instructions for him and they all have to basically take each other out yeah. and then he's the last person living oh what's the incredible line he says to the the bank teller guy at you know when he reveals himself in that intro do you oh remember oh my god i don't oh my i want to uh, go home and watch this right yeah, now it's incredible <laughs> but anyway so the whole opening like 10 minutes is mesmerizing like i remember watching that and i was as a matter of fact i remember in the theater which they don't do a lot christopher nolan do you remember this? He released the intro, the first five, ten minutes of Batman the Dark Knight, 
months before the movie came yeah. out as like a trailer like a little teaser trailer and it cr- but it was like a whole five minute it was that whole very long they, that, they actually did that for star trek 2 um as well the oh wow what is the second one called the into darkness into darkness which yeah. i love a they lot did of people did i love that one. intro scene that they showed That's months incredible. before the film yeah. released well it worked so the Dark Knight is one of those films I remember having the fucking poster on my wall. And here's why that's funny. At this stage, I'm what, like 30 something, you know? <laughs> I had the poster on my wall in my office. You know, we had like a, a game going to set and make targets so we could all go out and opening night and like get it. And we, we did and we got it and we went out and we saw it opening night. I was just transfixed. I was mesmerized. Absolutely. And as I said, there's so much going on with with Aaron Eckhart as, as Two-Face, Harvey Dent, as, and it shows his origin story as the lawyer. I didn't like, I guess, I guess this is something I could not I didn't like that they killed him off so fast because he was so good. Well, I don't think it was clear at the end of the film that he was dead because it, I remember... Well, then Dark Knight Rises, you just it's see him his in the memorial. Hospital. No, 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 it's his memorial. No, no. Yeah, uh, yes, that's yeah. true. But but when the film actually ends, I do not recall that you it was certain that he was dead. don't see him dead. That and, is true. And that is a mistake, I feel, that Christopher Nolan made with the storyline of the Dark Knight Rises, which we're going to talk about next, obviously. But but the the film itself would have been much better, in my opinion, if he had had, you know, Harvey Dent still alive and then introduced this new yeah. character of Bane and Catwoman. Well, and I, I know he felt like that would be I too can't much, believe but... I'm criticizing it because, as I said, I think this film's perfect and flawless. But that's the thing. You but, see, but it really wasn't this film. Yeah. It really yeah. wasn't in yeah. the film that he died, right. though. But anyway, his storyline, his friendship with Bruce Wayne, um, his relationship with Rachel Dawes and that love triangle between Bruce Wayne, Rachel Dawes and um, Harvey Which Dent. You also actually had get amazing invested. connection. You get invested in. Yeah, the chemistry is good. So there's that whole side story. Uh, Commissioner Gordon, who I think that's when he actually gets promoted and made Commissioner Gordon. And then, um, you know, and Harvey Dent's taking out all the all the what the gangsters of, of Gotham City and mm-hmm. and he's becoming like this bright ray of sh- uh, of hope and then um fucking Joker comes in and Just I mean 180 <laughs> now you have that intro scene which was great but my favorite the scene that well actually there's two scenes that freak me out so all the thugs are around the table and then Heath Ledger comes in and you know he's like basically crashes the party mm-hmm. and then one of the big like thugs come up comes over to him and he's like you want to see a trick and he puts like this pen on the table pencil. the pencil, pencil. and he the slams the, the thug's head on it basically the pencil like goes right through its head and just kills him instantly it's like whew, it's disappeared you know oh, it was so spooky and then they all take the guns out and he opens up his jacket and he's got bums all and over it, him and it was just it was so like I don't think I've ever seen a villain so scary oh, you know I don't think I've ever seen a so villain who was real. able yeah who was able to make you so afraid because you never know what's going through his head you never right. know how sinister you know all they found all they found when they arrest him is lint and knives That's you know what right. i mean like no like, motive really yeah there's no there's no sense of i'm trying to get revenge i'm trying to get money i'm trying to get back at someone i'm trying to you know you know attack this particular person he didn't care who he attacked he didn't care what he was doing or how it hurt people yeah all he wanted to do was see the chaos of society because that that somehow motivated him to then hurt people more that's right i don't even think he knew what he was doing or why he was doing it which makes it even more like and crazy scary. and i firmly believe that and this is a little bit you know now we're getting into philosophy but i i do believe that heath ledger tapped into something dark within himself to be oh, that character well i'm gonna get there because yeah. I, I i kind of have a obsession with heath ledger as an actor mm-hmm. right yeah I, he's someone who touched me like when he died in real life it's weird uh like I had a real loss. Yeah, with it. like kind of I like agree. James Dean, Kurt Cobain, Robin Williams. There's a few people that I didn't know them personally, but they I connected with. <laughs> it's like Heath you lost Ledger a friend. Was, yeah, I, yeah, I was. I found him mesmerizing. Yeah. I thought he was incredible, and obviously he, he's known for this performance. But he was incredible in other films, like you know, obviously Ten, Ten Things, things I, I Hate About, about yeah. You, Brokeback <laughs> Mountain, Monsters Ball, <laughs> Brokeback Mountain. He's fantastic. I mean, Two Hands is a film a lot of people haven't seen. He's incredible. Yeah, in. he, he's done a lot of amazing movies. Um, but anyway, I'm I'm losing track. So back to the Joker, and just to finish on that scene when the the gangsters there, and one of them even like says to him, "He's crazy." He's like, "I'm not." I'm not crazy. Don't and he like, crazy. yeah, he like licks himself. Um, but then there's that scene in the, the party, the fundraiser. That's the best one. That's the best scene where he comes in and with his henchmen and that whole camera angle, it kind of just around Rachel. Yeah. It mm. swirls around. He's like, yeah. And he, and he like 
this is an audio podcast, but he like flushes his head back when he sees Rachel Dawes. And he touches his greasy yeah. hair. And he grabs the champagne and drinks it and throws it away. And he's like, you know, you want to know how I got these scars? And what's the other line? I Why hate... so serious? <laughs> Why so serious? Yeah, you know, um, you know, anyway, and then Batman comes to save the day and he's got Rachel Dawes by the, the glass. He's like, let her go. And he's like, bad choice of words batman he shoots the glass and throws her out the window so scary Ugh. anyway so heath ledger stole the film completely mm -hmm. he steals every single scene he's in he's mesmerizing i mean like he mesmerizes me literally guys yeah i'm like uh, I'm like a five-year-old girl just like, watching the screen on every, mouth open, eyes wide, everything. You know, staring. Even in, when he's in the car, you know, in the police car, and he's got his head out the window, and he's just blowing in the wind, and he just looks insane. Or when he's dangling upside down at the end, or the whole confrontation with Batman in the interrogation room, and he's like, "You want to kill me? Kill you? I, I don't want to <laughs> kill you. You, you complete me. There'd be no fun without you." I mean. Oh, anyway, so every scene with him is amazing. So wonderful. It's so wonderful. And you're right. He, Heath Ledger had a diary. He had, he made notes. He, um, he really did go into the role. He was on a lot of antidepressants and drugs and he secluded himself and, um, he developed and created the character, mm -hmm. the nuances, the makeup, everything. It was all him. Yeah. You know, and he did kind of go to a scary place. And uh, there is a lot of controversy of uh, did it kind of drive him to suicide? And I don't know if that's the case. And unfortunately, I guess no one will ever know. No. And, you know, um, it's it, it is it's just a very sad thing because it's such a loss. But, you know, there, <laughs> there's there's a moment in the film uh, that also stands out to me very particularly. And I don't know if there's you recall this. There's a hundred scenes that stand out to me. Every scene. <laughs> the moment that he actually first is speaking directly with Harvey Dent's character after Harvey Dent has already been his burned. Face. His face has been no. burned. Hi. And he, he Remember that? Hi. Hi. And he comes and he's dressed as the nurse. As a nurse. The nurse. And he's, he's fluffing his hair. He's like, hi. With it's the makeup like, still on. It's, it's just so amazing because even in that moment, you know, he knew exactly what to say to create a, a villain. Right. To create a he villain. He drives Harvey Dent crazy. Yeah. yeah. He puts him into that level of insanity that he's already at. You yeah. know what I mean? And then Harvey Dent, of course, mm -hmm. becomes Two-Face, who then, you know, tries to kill Commissioner Gordon's son, which doesn't make any sense. Right. You know can what I, I mean? Can I say something before no. you delve into... Yeah, of Tony. <laughs> We're fanboying. Him. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys are just having your own, like, bromance Well, The Dark Knight is... It's I love a it. masterpiece. A masterpiece. But just the one thing that I want to say from my point of view, what I thought was really cool, you, you mentioned, like, these Batman movies and they're using all these gadgets and making it fantastical. And like, I think what really was cool about Heath Ledger is he made the character so real. He didn't have all these like yeah. brilliant he didn't devices. Need that. Or, probably why he's so and scary. And it's so that freaking person real. Exist. Yeah. And how he accomplished everything and yeah. how conniving and manipulative and just like, and it was are, so freaky because it was so real. He didn't need all these like and the only time he Gadgets really gets frustrated is at the end of the movie, fast forward, when he tries to plot the two ships against each other. One has and all they the, they all they the don't convicts fall for it. and one they has don't. civilians. And he basically wants one of them to choose to blow them up. And they, they basically... He, we'll both it, die then. They basically prove him wrong because mm -hmm. he thinks he can turn everyone crazy, which, but they don't. And that's and, when he really gets frustrated. And that's a commentary on society, which I yeah. really appreciated. That um, whole scene from was Christopher incredible Nolan. to me. Yeah, because, you know, chaos brings out the worst in people. You know what I mean? Uncertainty, uncertainty, pain. You know, they bring out the worst in people. And, and when you see people at that those moments when they're up against the corner and they're, you know, they're backed up and they're, they're the being attacked. The odds are against them. And yeah, you know, they'll they'll bring out, um, you know, and this has been seen in so many films and so many, so many um, television shows, you know, that the, it'll bring out the worst in people. The Walking Dead, I think, does the best of that, you know, where, where they really show you the darkness that comes out in someone. And the, the fact that... Um, you know, Christopher Nolan chose to take it in a direction of positivity. I think I, it really says something about him as a person. I had his own viewpoints on on society, um, but I just loved the fact that you know the the, the most scary of the, all the prisoners is the one that actually throws this remote That's out right, the window that huge and is yeah, and he's just like criminal. he's just like who are we? Well, he's like mm -hmm. everyone knows what needs to be done. I'll do it, and you think he's going to like push the button and blow up the other ship, but he doesn't. He throws it out the window, yeah, showing that he he's he's a human being, yeah, mm -hmm. you know. Anyway, unfortunately, um, we do have to move on, okay, um, because we've still got quite a few others to cover, but uh, <laughs> we could talk about the Dark Knight all night. I, I I love that you love it so much too. I, I'm so passionate about it. Um, 
I do consider Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker, and actually most people do, most critics do, as one of the the masterclasses of acting, one of Absolutely. the greatest male acting performances mm-hmm. of all time. Absolutely. But there's so much more to the film than just that, which is really what makes it so truly wonderful. Right. You all agree? Yeah. Okay, good. So the, the next one... got watch it again. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just <laughs> I'm watched like it. I'm like so right hyped Here's up what, to I told you, again. I just watched it three times. I would sit down and watch it with you right now after this podcast. <laughs> I'm absolutely. seriously considering it. Yeah, I, I absolutely would. Okay, so then Dark Knight Rises came up and there was so much buzz for this film. It it was palpable. It was huge. Um, I loved The Dark Knight Rises. It's very split with fans. Critics thought it was okay it was a huge I monster it. hit it made over a billion dollars obviously that's where you got tom hardy's bane now you have my permission to die <laughs> i thought that was iconic you merely adopted the darkness i was born in it i was bo- yeah i'm not gonna that's pretty try. good that aaron. was good aaron i so i would like to say this um which i don't know if we've decided to talk about this but lego batman has also become a, a wonderful treasure of mine i didn't put it here i love that and we love the in lego the film movies. The character that plays Bane, the actor that Doug plays Benson. Bane, does this voice, and I die every time I hear it. Because, <laughs> you know, when you're watching the film at Dark Knight Rises, you know, I, I didn't find his voice particularly off or odd. And, and I love you know, it. Sim- similarly, when I was watching the, the Dark Knight and, you know, the way Batman's voice is, how it's very gruff and ridiculous. You know, it, it doesn't seem that ridiculous when you first watch it because you're so immersed in the film and the quality of the film that it doesn't throw you off. But but so with Bane's voice, it was one of those things where it's like after the fact, you were kind of like, oh, that was kind of weird. You know, he did kind of a weird <laughs> Well, no, here's talking. what's interesting. It's been parodied so much, but it's become iconic. Right. It really has. I mean, Kevin sure. Smith does it on his podcast, Hollywood Babylon. And Doug Benson is a comedian. I don't know. He's got a podcast called Doug Loves Movies, which my wife is obsessed with. I, I took her to one of the mm. live oh, showings right. yeah, a did. couple of weeks ago. I would love that. Yeah, we loved it. It was great. And I mean, he smokes, you know, tons of weed and he just comes on stage and he's so high. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's known for doing that voice. So they cast him in the Lego Batman I movie. That's what's so it. funny. Um <laughs> But okay, so The Dark Knight Rises, Christopher Nolan, this is the, you know, the penultimate movie, the final in the trilogy. I actually, I remember when I saw it in the theater, I enjoyed it. I thought it sagged in the middle and then it came back strong. I loved the third act. Now, let me give you a little bit of a backdrop on this. So Nightfall was one of my favorite comic books. Are you familiar with Nightfall? No. Okay, so Nightfall was the whole story of Bane. It was one of the most popular Batman comics in the 90s where Bane breaks Batman's back. And Bat- what? Bruce, yeah, yeah, and Bruce Wayne and Batman is gone. For like two years in real life in the comic book world. And then this other and then this other person called something like Ezekiel. There was a blonde Batman for like two years. <laughs> it's up on my oh, shelf. The, yeah. the the volume is up on my shelf. Oh, and wow. I think it was called like Night's Quest and a Night's End. It was a whole series of comic books. So I was probably, I don't know, like 17, 16. I, I loved them. Mm. So I knew that story. So Dark Knight Rises isn't mm-hmm. based on those exactly, but it has that story and maybe you don't remember this, but he when he battles uh, Batman, Bane battles mm-hmm. Batman, he breaks his back. And then he yeah, gets, and then he gets thrown again. into that, like, dungeon. So, I, anyway, I, yeah. So, I, uh, oh, so yeah. that yeah. bugged me that, you know, he, it, I guess it's months and months going by that he's recovering. And also, it just seems so weird that none of them could get out of that place. Anyway, there's, I have a lot of qualms about that. And then all the uh, cops, the thousands of the cops that get, like, barricaded and trapped under... <laughs> <laughs> so Dark Knight Rises has been criticized by a lot of people. Um, and I, I do have faults with it, but um, I, I enjoyed it very much. I, I thought Bale was great. I actually really liked Anna Hathaway as a Catwoman, Anne. Selena Kyle. Anne Hathaway. Yeah. Did you like her since you're such a, a, a have a love affair with Batman Returns? I did it really thoroughly enjoy I thought she her. Was and really I felt good. I felt that she stood out in the her performance. I felt that they took a direction with Catwoman that was very different than Batman Returns, which I really appreciated because nobody could replace Michelle Pfeiffer. So the way that they made her, you know, a, a cat bird pet cat burglar. Just like a different of, character that yeah, they totally created. different. It had nothing to do with her being similar to a cat. It was, it was. She was a thief, right. which you know is why I, mean? I think it worked. And What's that line strong. from Dark Knight Rises? I usually don't get into cars with strangers. This isn't a car. <laughs> and then it turns into a freaking plane, and it oh, flies yeah. off into the air. That was a bad Batman. 
this isn't a car. <laughs> there were some great lines from her too. Like she's like, there's a storm coming in Gotham and soon it's yeah. going to get well, you or whatever it is. Yeah, and, Why are you doing this? You don't owe them anything. Well, she double crosses him yeah. and leads Batman to Bane and Bane beats the living shit out of him and breaks his back. Mm-hmm. So a commentary on that real quick is uh, Christopher Nolan, after coming off the high of Batman, of Dark Knight, um, you know, was like, you know, I need a villain who, you know, can do something that, that Heath Ledger and that the Joker, you know, has hasn't done you know what i mean we had ra's al ghul ra's al ghul's a badass and he's very manipulative we had the joker who no one can match in terms of the quality of, of that villain right so he's like so what is a sc- what is the scariest thing that batman could face and and to him the scariest thing he could face is someone who was physically stronger right mm. so you know when 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 you have the the situation of of you know let's say um you know man on man no gadgets no fancy foot you know kind of like dancing around this is just one guy fighting another batman couldn't keep up it doesn't really explain it in the dark knight rises because in the comic books he has this venom that makes him all like superhuman strength um in the film bane does bane does that bane yeah i'm talking about bane um in dark knight rises it doesn't really explain that and also see i found that cheesy when he fights him again at the end he goes for the mask and he punches the mask i mean come on that's kind of obvious you know and then because the mask comes off it releases the stuff he needs and he seems to lose power so it doesn't really explain it anyway so dark knight rises to me had some qualms and it really sagged for me in the middle when you know he gets his back broken and he's in the prison and there all was... the cops are barricaded under but then it came back and had such a strong third act which we'll talk about but i'll let you talk for a yeah second. no there was <laughs> i agree with you with yeah. everything that you said and there was uh, i think the the holes in, in the film had to do with the storyline right. and, and the script it wasn't um he didn't i think christopher nolan you know he, he wanted to do something but he didn't necessarily think of all of the ways that it could play itself out like right. this idea of gangsters being able to take over the city and and keep it under their control and no one else could come in and do anything about it is ridiculous you know what i mean yeah like, exactly come on the where's army, all the military and yeah they don't care about the civilians they have planes they have helicopters. yeah they're, they're gonna they come in and dropped, just take over yeah and they say they have a bomb the military could have just dropped a bomb on them so it exactly. was it was there was a lot of holes in that regard and and, and like you said the prison the, the magical prison that you know was underground and nobody could get out of you know that actually was seen um i don't know if you ever saw uh the vin diesel film um Chronicles of Riddick. Oh yeah, I have. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that was a very similar concept. They were in this prison that was underground and the, no one could get out of it. So it had kind of already been done and, and I felt like um, it took away a little yeah. bit. It didn't. You know what the lamest part of that was if you hmm. watch that scene again? And I hate to nitpick this movie, but there are some definite faults with it. When he makes that impossible jump, it really doesn't look that far. I'm overweight. Tony, do you think you could do yeah, that Yeah, I'm job? overweight. I'm not in good shape. And I was like, you know what? I think I, I, could, probably. Could, I could probably do that. <laughs> sure. So it really didn't make sense to me. But here's the thing. Despite that, number one, it was a huge hit. Number two, I still thoroughly enjoy Dark Knight Rises. Sure. I've seen yeah. it 10 times. Yeah. Um, it's not the perfection to me that the Dark Knight was. But I, I did like it. And here's the main reason why I loved the last act. I really did. I Even though there were problems with it, I loved how the, you know, the cops, the goodies and the baddies all come together in this and big Mary, battle. And Marilyn... Co- Marion Cotillard. Yes. Well, she's at, so the twist Cotillard. is she's, she's Ra's al Ghul's daughter, daughter. And she's actually the baddie. Yeah, the daughter. Yeah. What do you say? Daughter? Daughter. Daughter? <laughs> daughter. She's the daughter, yeah. And she was good in it. And, and, and I liked that. And... Um, I will say one thing about her performance, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I think she was really good. But it was cool because I didn't expect right. it to take the twist that it did. Well, with I knew her who character. she was because I'm a comic book nerd. But no, I, I agree. She from was a completely good. different perspective, knew it, nothing about it. No, they it. threw everyone for a loop with that, sure. which was good. Um, and then I loved the whole side thing with Joseph Gordon Levitt. I actually loved that. JGL, yeah, my so boy. He's the, well, he's this rookie cop. <laughs> You're my boy, Blue. And then there's You're this twist <laughs> ending where basically Batman quote unquote sacrifices himself and there's that beautiful beautiful thing that Michael Caine says to him that I, I have this dream that one day I'll be in, you know, some cafe in France and I'll look over my shoulder and I'll see you there with a complete stranger and you'll nod at me like you don't know me and I'll just carry on with my tea. And he says that towards the beginning of the film and that's how the movie ends. After Batman flies off with the atomic bomb, you know, and then you see it blow up and you think he sacrificed himself, it shows um, you know, Michael Caine, you know, at the grave, at the funeral, saying, I failed you, I failed you all. And, um, you know, um, 
uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's Le- character, he's this rookie cop who kind of befriends Bruce Wayne, gets left like the keys or some of his and goods think. and stuff. Um, and then it shows Michael Caine in a cafe in Spain or Italy, wherever it is, and he looks over and he sees Christian Bale, um, Bruce Wayne, with Selena Kyle, Anne Hathaway. You know, and he just kind of nods. And I, I, to me, that was quite profound. And then you see uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt with the um, the orphanage, and it shows his and his real name is Dick, Robin. Uh, well, no, Dick Grayson or Robin. something. Robin. Oh, it's just Robin. <laughs> Robin. Okay, good. So I mean, you can't get more direct than that. Then. Robin. That, Robin. Is, that is the answer to your question. Yeah. Robin. I actually thought it was like Dick Grayson or one of the. Which would have made sense, but yeah. it was not. It was just Robin. It was Robin. Oh, there you go. So that's very. I very think. They, direct. I think that. Yeah. That, well, I think just they... to finish, and then because to me, I was like. Fuck yeah! In the theater, when he, uh, you know, goes into the Bat Cave, and then he releases it, and the way that shot is done with just him rising, the Dark Knight yeah. rises. He rises, and then the blackness just comes. I was like, yeah! <laughs> and then everyone thought he was going to be like Nightwing, and there was, was going to be so a spin off. Excited for that, and nothing happened. I, I was that's so what I was going to say. I thought something would yeah. happen, but. Anyway, I love the third act. Um, it was great. And it really redeemed the film for me. Um, we're way over time here, but it's okay. Um, did you want to say anything else about Dark Knight Rises, guys? No, I just, I, I definitely loved Anne Hathaway. I loved, um, you know, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I loved Marion Cotillard. I loved, um, you know, Bane. Bane. I love, I love, <laughs> I love his crazy voice. And, you know, I think Tom Hardy um, brings something, you know, unique to all of his parts. And he really did um, encapsulate that character. And, and Bane is not a particularly interesting interesting character and he did something with it that no one else has done um previously and and you know i I love that about that so anyway i thought it was really cool you have my permission to admire me aaron thank you (laughs) (laughs) okay so next is watchman i I won't go into a whole detail on it because it kind of doesn't really yeah it doesn't really have anything to do with uh you know the dc universe but Zack Snyder directed it kind of before he took over the whole DC universe. <laughs> and I actually love Watchmen. Um, I thought it was really good. I just couldn't get over the naked blue guy. Well, yeah, Dr. Manhattan. Well, just I so you know, Watchmen is... Have you read the comic book? I have not. Well, I... I have you seen the movie? I did see the movie and, I, and I've and i seen the graphic novel. Mm. I was not aware that it was a DC comic, but I, yeah. I have seen the graphic novel. And, and, Watchmen you know, is considered one of the most acclaimed graphic novels of all time. Mm-hmm. And for many, many decades, it was considered unfilmable. Like you couldn't make it into a film. Um, it's a very controversial film. It's very divided. I think it's a masterpiece. I, I agree. I, think, I, I enjoyed it, but Zach again, Snyder I was distracted. Done. I love that film. Um, the characters, everything. Uh, Jackie uh, Earl Hurley as Rorschach, I absolutely loved. Was he the um, guy with the cheesecloth thingy? Yeah. Rorschach. You know, it's a psychiatry yeah. test. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, the cheese. The Rorschach. Whatever the thing. It, yeah, he has <laughs> the like shroud. this, this like, mask. Thing. Yeah, look, it was such a different film. It, visually, it was stunning, which Zack Snyder does very well. The soundtrack, I mean, that opening sequence with a uh, times are changing with uh, Bob Dylan. Yeah. Um, but it was very violent. It was very sexual. Yeah, you very, had Billy Crudup as Dr. Man. Uh, Billy Crudup. Blue dong. <laughs> the, I love the sex scene between um, the owl, you know, owl man. Oh, Night and, Owl and no, Silk Spectre. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick Wilson and <laughs> Malin Aikman. God, that was and such a singing, hot scene. And there's that scene, um, Hallelujah, Hallelujah is singing, singing yeah. and it's, it's just such an intense scene you're just yeah. like wow this is a comic book because well, he's I'm never like, had he's, he hasn't had sex in years or yeah. something like he's impotent in the comic book anyway the film has real dark <laughs> themes it's very violent <laughs> I, I remember a the friend of i remember a friend podcasts. of mine on telling me Tony, Tony, <laughs> Tony the movie guy no, i remember a friend that. of mine telling me that he went out to see watchman and he took his grandparents <laughs> and his mother <laughs> And he, like whenever like big Mr. blue dong, yeah, whenever Mister Manhattan was walking around with his big blue dong, and then especially at that sex scene, he said he was like sandwiched between his parents and his grandparents, and he was just looking at either side, and he was mortified. Um. Anyway, look, I won't, I, I won't story. go on a roll about Watchmen because it's also kind of a bit separate. But I think that film's phenomenal. Um. Let's move on. So now I am on Green Lantern. Okay. Um. We won't talk about it a lot. Um, we'll give it a minute. We'll throw well, it a minute. Here's what's interesting about Green Lantern. I was really excited for it. The trailers. I thought Ryan Reynolds was a, a, looked like he was going to be cast great as a Hal, Hal Jordan is a, one of the most mm-hmm. popular. There's actually several Green Lantern characters, but Hal Jordan is probably the most well known. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Mark Strong was Sinestro, but kind of before he comes bad. Anyway, 
visually, I thought it had cool effects. And I actually liked kind of um, Ryan Reynolds' kind of witty Hal Jordan because he's mm-hmm. like that. I thought the problem was in the, the, the script, the story. And then Peter Sarsgaard, who's an actor I really admire... I thought was so miscast as like he's the that big brain and, guy, right? Yeah, yeah the big so I was brain Aaron, monster. I, it was so weird. So many problems with that. Yeah. Character. Now here's what's interesting. <laughs> so the film was a huge flop, flopped at the box office. Critics, um, you know, absolutely shat all over it. I actually bet you Ryan Reynolds looks back at that film not too bad. Everyone might think that he'd think, "Ooh, that's one of the worst films of my career." And he's like, "No, not really." Well, can I tell you why? Why he met Blake Lively on that set. Well, now they're go. married yeah, with with a kid, and, yeah. you know, and they seem like a really happy couple. Um, and then obviously he came back with Deadpool, which was just phenomenal. So he's kind of redeemed himself. But uh, I saw it in the theater, and I've seen it two or three times. I actually own it. It's not a good film, but it's not terrible. Would you agree? I would agree. I like that film. Um, My comments on this is that I love the concept of the Green Lanterns, um, of the lanterns in general, and that the fact that there are these different um, types of uh, stones, which are similar to the Infinity Stones, but not the same because it's not Marvel, it's DC. There's Um, a scene in Justice League where it shows a Green Lantern fighting in one of the ancient battles. Absolutely. And there there are these abilities that this particular, you know, and and it didn't matter what race you were from, you could become a Green Lantern, which I thought was really unique. So there's there's a lot of uh, uh, canon of the Green Lantern series that is fascinating to me and I and I do feel like those specific points were done very well in the film yeah. now as a film it wasn't great and yeah. again because I think of exactly what you said you know Peter Skarsgård Skarsgård was miscast and um, you know and, and they I just don't think it it didn't all come together great. I didn't like his sidekick, quote unquote, friend either. Um, I don't Hal even remember. I, I don't see. I don't even remember, remember the character. And I remember the dad. I didn't yeah. care for. Yeah. Um, like um, lively. Yeah. It was kind of just a cheesy film. wasn't great. We'll move on from there. Okay. So here's where we're at now. So now we're at where the DC quote unquote dun, dun, universe. Dun. Um, kind of starts now. The the DC EU, as it's called, the you know, DC expanded universe hasn't really taken off in the same way as Marvel expanded universe, but they were basically trying to take some of that, you know, magic and make that happen. So Zack Snyder did Man of Steel. Um, so you've already mentioned you're not a big fan of Man of Steel. Um, so here's how I feel about Man of Steel, and, and, and I'll sum this up very quickly because we are running really long. But um, Man of Steel started so strong, and it was Don't such worry a great, about that, by yeah, <laughs> it was such a good origin film of this concept of this character who I don't care for, but I really felt for this character because I felt that you know coming from this alien planet, and, and they did a really great job introducing that. I think Russell Crowe's amazing actor, and so you know introducing this character, even the woman that plays his mother was great, Diane you know Lane, I mean? yeah, yeah, and, the and Kevin Costner oh, yeah. is the dad, yeah, yeah. she's you know, Martha General Kent Zod. And- all of these Michael people Shannon. are very strong actors. Yeah. So Michael oh, Shannon, yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so then you get into you know reality, and he's now kind of kind of um, you don't know why, and they explain it later. But but he's kind of you know given up his effort to try and be a hero, and, but he can't help it. You know right. what I mean? He can't help but be a good person and save people. And then, you know, as the storyline goes on, he ends up coming back to, um, you know, Metropolis and, you know, meets Lois Lane and, and all this stuff happens. And, um, you know, it, it really gets him to the point where he embraces being Superman. Where the film goes wrong, which I think you guys ended up talking about a little bit on on one of the other podcasts, you and Yenny, um, is, is that moment where a movie just becomes all about CG and fighting. Explosions and, and, it just and blowing takes, everything up. It just yeah. takes away, you know, it, it's not all about that. You yeah. know what I mean? And it didn't entertain me. I didn't care for the product placement and the Dunkin' Donuts or whatever the fuck was going on there. It was too much. <laughs> yeah, it was too much. And, and, and it took a, it took so much away. The the music in the film was beautiful. The acting in the film Isn't was beautiful. Isn't that Hans Zimmer again? Um, I believe so. I the and music was great. There's there is a melody that plays every time Superman is just alone, and there's several of these scenes where he's just kind of solemnly staring off, and and there's just this beautiful horns and trumpets that come in, and it's just so well done. And, and then and then you t- you take the film and you just throw it in the trash with this end sequence. You know right. what I mean? So it's like it's like wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And I'm actually like sitting on the edge of my seat, like I love this movie. And then it just went into the dumpster. For well, me. well, and I agree with you that the overuse of explosions and stuff bugged me. And one of the biggest things that i had a beef with was he kills general zod superman does which i mean he would never do you know and they try and show his conflict with doing it like he has to but Mm -hmm. uh, superman's never killed anyone in the comic books ever so that bugged me but um we haven't even mentioned henry cavill was cast 
as Superman, yeah. oh, which Henry. is kind of unique because he's British and he's a total hunk. He's a total spooning. hunk. Um, and Love I, him. I think, <laughs> I think and look, he's he's easy to look at, even as a guy. I'll say that. Um, he, he, no, he's <laughs> I a, think so. <laughs> yeah, he's a gorgeous guy, but um, he was. He's a bit of a one-note actor, in my opinion. I don't what? Think I don't think he's a great actor. Actually, the only thing I really know Watch him from the Tudors. is the Tudors. That's where I know him <laughs> from. I also loved him in The Immortals. Oh, I thought it was okay. See, that film Can was I quite Can I say forgettable. one thing about well, the Just to finish my the rant, movie? and then don't sure. worry, I'll, I'll definitely let you talk. Um, okay. Man of Steel, I was kind of conflicted about. Um, the trailers, the buzz for it was huge. Because, um, again, it was another reboot, but it, it looked like it was going to be done yeah. right this time. It was successful, but it got kind of mixed reviews. When I watched it in the theater, I remember I was kind of split. There were certain things I loved and there were certain things I didn't. The whole third act, just like you explained, bugged me. The fact that he uh, he kills General Zod bugged me. Um, the way Jonathan Kent died, Kevin Costner, his father, getting flown off in a tornado was weird you know i don't know why they changed it because um superman could have easily saved him but in the original he dies of a heart attack that's more realistic you know because it's natural and you know he could like turn back time like he does at the end of superman to save lois lane what i what i did like about that can can i just say is is this um there was a very exact point that Zack Snyder was trying to make with that scene, which was that it was more important to, you know, the father, right? Uh, Kevin Costner's character that Superman know when he can or cannot act on his abilities and reveal himself um, than his own life. And I agree with you on that, but I think that that would have been one of those exact moments that but he should I have acted on that. Well, I just want to finish my part? diatribe because I think I, I think I forgot. <laughs> okay. What was I going to say? No, no, we're all excited, so it's good. But, oh, I was just trying to pa- point out a few things that really bugged me. So here's yeah. the thing that upset me the most was um, Lois Lane in all the original films, one of the best parts of the chemistry with Clark Kent and Superman is she does not know his identity. And they reveal it immediately in Man of Steel. Mm -hmm. He reveals his identity to her. That really bugged me. Um, But there were some magnificent scenes. So, um, and the whole opening uh, scene of the film is like 30 minutes um, on Krypton with uh, Jor-El, Russell Crowe. He gets a much expanded role. And actually that was kind of cool. Yeah. You know, it shows that, you know, the kind of whole beginning of before um, Kal-El gets sent off to Earth and then becomes Superman. So what I was going to say is when I saw it in the theater, I remember I kind of had mixed uh, feelings, but I've watched it several more times. And that's a film that over the years I've enjoyed more and more. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen it about five times now and it actually gets better for mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Um, I'm done now. <laughs> what did you want to say? <laughs> Just when I saw the preview for it and they showed young Superman when he's a kid and his school bus like goes over the bridge or whatever. That was a cool scene. And then he has to like pull open the doors and save somebody. At that point, he kind of, I, I felt he didn't really have developed his powers as much Mm. so when the scene happened with his dad he might not have been able to actually know that he could fly or do that like i don't know if he had that developed Uh, well i think they established in the film that he doesn't learn how to fly until he's an adult that's right so that's why i think he didn't save his dad not because he had to make a decision but so i want to point that out and also that scene in the trailer really caught my eye and it got me super excited to see it because it's like i i love superman and i like the concept of it um he was very emotional you know, yeah. I, I was... yeah, and I thought Amy Adams did a really good job. No, I, I, no, I, no, I actually, her. I, I, I actually didn't her. mind her, but I, I hated her. that they, the big reveal. I because well, it wasn't the, true to the original. Well, I just love the, the fact dynamic. that she never right. knows who he is, which is what I liked from yeah, the original. So, so look, we'll move on. Uh, to me, I think Man of Steel is a film that people should watch again because I was surprised how much I've enjoyed it the more I've seen mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay, good. So now we have the film that kind of became an abomination for DC, which is Batman vs. Superman. There was so much hype. Oh, for this I never film. saw that. People one. thought this was going to be. See what I mean? Isn't that crazy? I mean, a lot of people thought this was. <laughs> no, there was hype for years. Zack Snyder directed it. Ben Affleck got cast as Batman. A lot of people thought that was terrible. I thought he really looked the part. Um, I don't know. It was just the proposition of that film was so exciting. Um, <laughs> and it came out. And I don't know what to say. I mean, number one, here's what's interesting. It made $800 million, like $900 million. And they considered it a complete box office failure because they expected a movie of that magnitude magnitude with like Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman first makes her appearance would make like over a billion dollars easily. And it didn't. Um, And critically, it was just 
derailed. Now, did you like Batman vs Superman, Aaron? What I would like is for you to to tell me about your opinions on the film, and then I'm going to tell you about mine. Okay, I watched it in the theater. Here's what's really interesting. I watched it in the theater and I had my Superman t-shirt on and I was sitting next to a guy with a Batman t-shirt on. And we both looked over at each other and nodded and were like, hey. (laughs) Uh, It was really funny. Um, Anyway, I watched it. I actually dragged Danny to watch it with me. She was asleep within 15 minutes. Um, It started off strong. It actually did. It kind of starts off with the end of Man of Steel where Superman Mm -hmm. is fighting General Zod and it shows on the ground in in Gotham... um, Batman, uh, Ben Affleck, uh, Mm -hmm. Bruce Wayne, running to one of his Wayne Towers that gets destroyed. So it kind of shows all the destruction. It starts off strong. Then it it just kind of goes all weird. Um, The first hour and a half of that movie, I think, is god-awful. Here's what what (laughs) I didn't like about this. I don't know what direction Zack Snyder was going in, but he, he decided to make that film, for some reason, very somber- and very depressing and very dark and very moody and it did not work for me i hated jesse eisenberg as lex luther which i i'm like the biggest banksy fan in the world i've got banksy tattoos all over me and lex luther comes in you know as this like hipster guy with a banksy t-shirt on a long flowy hair and, and you're like no, no, jolly no, no. ranchers <laughs> and it was just nothing like lex luther is well although at right at the end you see him get shaved and he kind of looks a bit more like Lex Luthor but I couldn't stand his depiction there were so many other storylines and things going on that I didn't think made much sense and then the whole premise of Batman has to take out Superman because he's just too powerful uh, and then he fights him and there's a huge fight and then the reason he doesn't kill Superman because Batman gets kryptonite is because he says Martha he's like why'd you say Martha She's my mother. She's my mother too. And what? They, so they're and, brothers? No, mother, <laughs> mother. No. Oh, yes. <laughs> Julie. No. I didn't Ma- see this movie. I'm that very confused. So oh my amazing. god, Julie, you're amazing. No, Martha Kent is Superman's mom. You just said she's my she, mother. She's my mother too. Let me finish. Let okay. me finish. Martha Kent is Clark Kent's mother. <laughs> this is hum- so great. Human mother who. Because yeah. Superman as a yes. baby gets, yes. you know, dropped off in a farm and Martha and Jonathan can adopt him as a baby. Okay. okay. Bruce Wayne's mother was Martha Wayne. So their their mother's names Just were, were the same. Martha. So that's kind of the premise for why Batman stops to kill him and immediately okay. <laughs> becomes his ally. But from that point on, that whole last hour, where then that warehouse scene where Batman saves Martha Kent... It is phenomenal, that whole battle, although he straight up kills people, which Batman never does. Um, And then Doomsday coming about, and then Gal Gadot's introduction as Wonder Woman, and them battling um, Doomsday. The whole last act, I actually enjoyed. Now, I left the theater kind of depressed and like, oh, that wasn't very good. Then I saw the ultimate edition. There's an uncut edition that's three hours long. And it's much better because it fills in a lot of these... That other, they had just cut out. These and... other random storylines that you just didn't really get, you know. Um, the problem is, is you have to get through an hour and a half of shit. You have to slog through that <laughs> to enjoy the second half. Bring so, a shovel. Yes, I have emotions on this movie. Now, there's a lot of people who still do consider it a masterpiece. I'm not one of them. I guess I'm very split because I do like the second half of it. Go ahead, Aaron. <laughs> wait, wait, so, let me let me yeah, just say one thing. Ahead. So I didn't see this movie, and I saw the Justice League, and I didn't realize... That Superman and Batman Superman... are brothers. <laughs> sh- sh- <laughs> shut your face. No, that he died. So In can the... you go into detail about what happened? Because I was well, like, they fight. he's dead? Okay, like, good. So who killed... Did he kill... Like, so what the... actually happened? Can somebody tell me? I'm going to tell you Thank if you'll you. be quiet. <laughs> so one of the most famous comic books uh, from the 90s that I also own called The Death of Superman is mm-hmm. Doomsday. Is this all-powerful monster. Who... I, I think it's called Superman Dies. No, it's called The Death of Superman. It's right up he's there. He's got it. <laughs> um, he's like, I've got the book. Yeah, it's right there okay. on the shelf. I'm pointing, but the listeners can't see what I'm pointing. <laughs> anyway, um, Doomsday battles Superman and um, battling each other. He defeats Doomsday, but they kill each other. And okay, again, so in, Batman in the real life, Superman. in the comic books, Superman goes away for like two years and then there's a different version of Superman. So they kind of take that storyline a little bit 
uh, in this and in Batman vs Superman okay. when uh, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman are battling Doomsday. He kills Doomsday, but he sacrifices himself and dies. So it. Um, it ends with him in a grave, but the last frame is the grave kind of shakes a bit and then it goes black, cuts okay. to black. So you think, oh, he's still alive. So that's why you saw in Justice League that <laughs> okay. coming in. Anyway, thank we, you. We, thank you for we won't be in. We won't talk about this a lot more, but I do want you to give your take on Batman vs. Superman. Absolutely. So basically, um, you know, th- this was a very interesting and kind of bold move for Zack Snyder to um, take on introducing Batman and Wonder Woman into a new film with Superman and still think he's going to be able to keep people up, to, to keep people interested. Did you, did you like it? So I think generally I would say yes. I was okay. entertained by the film. I, I don't think it's... Um, <laughs> I don't think it's a good movie. I don't. Right. I didn't think it was a great film. But See, it's I not liked a bad it. movie. There's just certain things that drove me bananas. Agreed. Yeah. And and you know, I it's think it's frustrating. I think <clears throat> bananas. <laughs> bananas. B a n a n. This shit is bananas. <laughs> Where DC is going wrong, um, you know, is something that Zack Snyder, in an effort to not be like you know Marvel, is trying to 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 fit it all into one film. You know and what I also, mean? I think DC was trying to be much more darker and mature. And, mature. Yeah, and there was mature. a sense that, you know, Batman's already been done. We don't want to do another separate Batman film. We just had three very successful Batman films. There were previously successful Batman films. So we, if we do a whole new Batman film, no one's going to want to watch it. Right. So we're going to introduce Batman with Superman as though they're enemies. And we're going to do something totally different. Great idea. But you didn't pull it off. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, and by the way, it's called Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. So it's supposed to be kind of the origin of Justice League. Because again, everyone thought Justice League was going to be one of the biggest films of all time, which huh, we're going to well, get to that. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> and also, like, you know, it wasn't a great platform to introduce Wonder Woman. They should have released Wonder Woman prior to this movie. Yeah, I and, actually agree. And if they had, people would have liked it more. Because yeah. I loved Wonder Woman. Yeah. And I loved Wonder Woman in Batman vs. Superman. But her role was kind of just like, okay, because you you don't know this character yet. So then you're introduced to this character who is very beautiful, very interesting, very intriguing, and yet like hardly any time is spent on her. And then they just barely introduce the other characters from all of the other, you know, all the other Justice League members um, in, in Batman versus Superman. But again, they don't spend a lot of time on it. So you're, you're kind of like left wanting more, which again, you know, the purpose was to get you interested in Justice League. Mm. It just, it just... It didn't add to the franchise, in my opinion, unfortunately. Yeah, and again, here's what's very frustrating to me. There's an Ultimate Edition, which I own, which is over three hours, that really does make the story a lot more um, exciting and believable and make more sense. Mm -hmm. Um, But you still have to get through over three hours, and that first half to me is quite irredeemable mm-hmm. in the second half i actually find a lot more enjoyable anyway that's batman vs superman it's very divided with fans there's, there's people who think that film is a masterpiece and there's people who think it's god awful you know um whatever i think i'm kind of switzerland i'm a little on the fence <laughs> you know neutral zone th- there are things about it i like and things that i really don't i'll move on is that okay yes please. okay good so i'm going to go to suicide squad so similarly, there was a lot of um, excitement, a lot of hype. Uh, here's what's interesting about Suicide Squad. When it came out, it was a huge box office hit. You know I mean, huge. I mean, it exceeded expectations, but critics tore it to shreds. I saw it in the theater, and it helped that critics shat on it so much. Because I went in with low expectations, and I enjoyed it. I agree. I felt the same way. I liked the music. I loved Will Smith as Deadshot. I loved Margot Robbie as Harlequin. She's good in it. Jared Leto was... Um, I wouldn't say miscast as Joker. It was misleading the trailers because he's in it for like 10 minutes and he's just kind of wanted more well he's just an auxiliary character as part of harlequin's backstory it's not really a central thing um i was actually curious to see more of his joker obviously he was so overshadowed by heath ledger's joker everyone was just judging and comparing it to that it didn't bug me but anyway i thought viola davis was good in it even like boomerang and some of the other characters um i thought there was great action some good humor um the, the villain was ridiculous, Enchantress, and the Raspberry fucking... Cara... The, yeah, Cara Delevingne, who never smiles. And the Raspberry zombies that she controls drove me crazy. So there were certain things I couldn't stand. But I found it to be... It was actually an enjoyable movie. I agree. And that and... fire skeleton guy at the end, like, what? Yeah. Oh, you mean Loki? I think his name's Loki? 
No, not Loki from Fire Thor. Skeleton. You know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay. No, no. it's okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I do remember that there was something like that. I, it, it, I don't remember the movie that well. Um, <laughs> but you liked like, it. I did, I did enjoy the film, though. I remember walking away from the film feeling that Margot Robbie stole the show, that, um, you know, finally someone had embodied Harley Quinn and, and made her an interesting character. Because yeah. she's not very interesting. She's just, you know, the Joker's sidekick. And, and in, in her iteration of... of Harley Quinn made her interesting. Well, they made her sexy and psychotic. And literally and everyone appealing. was her for Halloween that year. Oh, they were. Oh, yes. Like, everyone. I, I actually liken it to Bright. In my last episode, I went on a tangent for this, uh, the Will Smith movie Bright that came out on mm-hmm. Netflix because critics said it was like the worst movie of the year, but it's a huge hit for Netflix. I really enjoyed it. And the reason why I got so, like, frustrated about it was because it's just silly popcorn entertainment. That's how I felt about Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. It worked because it, it was just fun. I thought Over it was the top, kind of yeah, silly, it was. but enjoyable. Yeah, we don't need to spend a lot of time on Suicide Squad. I thought it was solid. They're doing a sequel. I mean, it was a big hit. So it was good for DC that it was successful. But again, it, they took another critical hit. Uh, did you want to say anything else about Suicide no. Squad? Or not really, Aaron. <laughs> no, I was, I was going to comment on Bright, but that's fine because it's not really what we're talking about. <laughs> did here. you like Bright? I, I didn't care for it, but I, I, right, I felt like up. it was a very inter- <laughs> I felt like it was a very interesting storyline, yeah. and it just didn't it, it didn't do for me what I think it was meant to do, and that's okay. Yeah, but I just didn't think it was the worst film ever made. No, I They're don't, making I agree. a film about dwarfs and elves and orcs living in Los Angeles. I don't think they were trying to win any Academy Awards. No, no. <laughs> okay, good. So. So we'll move on to Wonder dun, Woman. Dun, dun. Yeah. Wonder Woman. Woo. <laughs> okay, look, so Wonder Woman, I think, is the one true hit and sensation that DC really have. I mean, it was a breath of fresh air. Here's why. So Wonder Woman, a lot was banking on it. Gal Gadot was cast Gal Gadot. as Wonder, Dum- uh, Wonder Woman. Diana Prince, Wonder Woman. Um, she was very unknown. She was in some of the Fast and the Furious films and things like that. Beautiful, but her acting skills were kind of untested. She was a incredible she, she was a revelation she blew movie. me away i thought she was just perfect she embodied everything that um diana prince and wonder woman is you agree right yeah aaron is hesitating do you no 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 i 100 percent agree don't worry, I wanna, I'll, I'll let yeah, you go on a tangent i want to go too. on a tangent um and you will um you will my <laughs> friend oh yes you will um anyway uh patty jenkins directed the film um you know this is something maybe a lot of people don't know there aren't a lot of female directors that get given these kinds of films and these big budget movies it, it's a problem in hollywood there really aren't um so patty jenkins is a director who directed monster with charlie Theron. that's her only other major film she did wow. Mm. wow she did wonder woman there was a lot riding on it and it was a critic and commercial hit huge one of the most highest reviewed films of the year and it was extremely successful huge box office smash more importantly it deserved it I, I, I've seen it three times. I saw it in the theater. I actually didn't have high expectations for this because I'm not personally a huge fan of Wonder Woman. It just looked really cool. Um, it exceeded my expectations. It really did. I found it. Uh, Themyscira with the Amazonians, that whole thing was incredible. Um, uh, the uh, Steve Trevor, Chris Pine, that chemistry they have together. Oh, he was so good. He's so charming. It was amazing. The emotional... Um, draw of his character and her the storyline was incredible even the side characters you know when they go off on their adventures together the no man's land scene mm-hmm. which has become iconic when wonder woman goes up into no no man's land and, and all the bullets are le- flying yeah, and leads she does the battle and gives them hope yeah. um you know and yes the the third act does get again a bit into that trope of the villain and cgi and explosions but the film had such amazing action, humor, and emotion, and Gal Gadot knocked it out of the park as, as Wonder Woman. So I was very impressed, and I, I've watched it a few more times, and, and I do think that that was a, a very refreshing hit. And also, here's what's um, really cool about this movie. Female empowerment all the way. And and I, I really can admire, respect that. Mm-hmm. Um Paddy Jenkins is now, the, the, she has the highest grossing film by a female director ever made. Um, and she was given uh, the reins to direct the sequel as well. Um, and uh, there's women who break down into tears over this movie. Seeing a female he- heroine like Wonder Woman depicted like that on screen and uh, talk about Halloween costumes, you know, tons of people Wonder went Woman as Wonder Woman. Year. 
I, and I really admire and respect that. So while Wonder Woman wasn't one of my favorite characters at all, um, I, I really, uh, that's why it's quite groundbreaking and historical, and I can respect that. But also, putting all that away, it is a damn good movie. It's, it's very entertaining. Yeah. That's my take. Aaron? Awesome. So, um, <laughs> ladies, over to <laughs> <laughs> So, basically, it's funny because me and Julie on the way over here were talking about this. And I, um, when I flew over to LA, watched the film again, actually. And I had seen it in the theater months ago and really liked the movie. Have you seen I, it once or? This was the second time okay. that I watched it. And I've I seen watched, it twice as well. Okay. I watched it and I was blubbering i was crying the end on, right Aaron? On the, in like, the theater there were several points of the movie that i was crying and I'm, yeah but that I'm end like tore you know, me and i'm not i'm not a particularly emotional person i don't cry you know really and so so i was like oh man this is like getting deep with me um but you know one thing that you know i just have to comment on gal Gadot. Gadot. We, yeah, we, it's Gal Gadot. You're Gadot. right. Gal I say Gadot. Gadot. I say Gal Gadot. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Gal Gadot. I you... have this habit of just pronouncing names wrong, but I know they're wrong, and I just keep doing it <laughs> like, anyway. Like Donald AJ. Gleason. <laughs> Donald. AJ. Donald. Yeah, Donald. Not I, Domnall. I say Domnall. Donald Gleason. Arrow. Continue. <laughs> so anyway, she, she just has this wonderful ability to embody, um, you know, this this innocence and, you know, this purity that, that you know, that there's not a lot of roles where you get to do that. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and for this character, you know, she's she's born and raised in the Mascara. Um, You know, I love that I'm talking about this. I'm such, I'm so nerding out right now. But oh, she's born and raised it. in the Mascara. She That's hasn't been exposed. Tony the Movie Guy podcast. <laughs> yeah, she hasn't been exposed to what it's like to interact with a man. She hasn't seen seen you know a dirty society a, 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 a conniving and evil society yeah, that banter on the boat about sex together is <laughs> amazing the dialogue the comedy it you know, so the, well the the the, the uh, back and forth find. you know what i mean the, the um what's the word uh the chemistry between the chemistry, him and, yeah. uh, between her and chris pine it's it's just so well done oh, and then the end it's truly emotional yeah. i was moved oh I my gosh like, so i'm much. a stone <laughs> in the whole movie you're you know one thing i love about um Greek mythology is that there's always this sense that you know um, yeah the gods are real but were they really real you know what I mean like this it, it's it's mythological it's silly and it's just a kind of a bedtime story to the kids of, of Greece you know of ancient Greece um, but you know I, I always love it when there's a sense that you you are questioning the reality of this particular type of being these gods and then they and then they reveal themselves and they reveal themselves in such a way where um, you know especially in this film obviously um, uh, Ares right reveals himself in this old he's the kind god of, of war right? kind of, yeah this old very meek kind of character That's, who's um, very david pensive. thewlis he's a british actor amazing actor and, and he is one Which of my unexpected favorite for me <laughs> and he was one of my favorite characters um or, or acting portrayals of a character in the harry potter series um oh, he, he's he the played werewolf. lupin lupin and, and that was uh, you know the prisoner of azkaban was my favorite of the harry potter That's series. That's my favorite book so, you know, when when he enters the film, you're kind of like, oh, this is a very interesting character. I didn't see that this actor was going to be in the film. And you're kind of like liking him because he's like the supporting role and he's helping her, you know, achieve the goal of finding <laughs> Ares. Yeah. Right. But little do you know, and little do you know, he, he is, is Ares. Ares. Yeah. So so the film just did so many things. And, and the other thing I, I didn't realize that it actually takes place during World War One. One. Um, yeah. which, Not World War Two. Well, yeah, World which, War One was so much more deadlier because they used gas, deadly gas and toxins. Very. Which is part of the plot of this right. film. Yeah, yeah, and very disturbing. So so it was it was just so well put together, you know, every single actor came with their a game, you know right. what I mean? Gal Gadot, Chris Pine, um, Robin Wright Penn. She was um, great. Yeah. The actress that plays Connie her Britton. mother, Connie Britton. Con Connie Britton. Connie Nielsen. Nielsen. Sorry, yeah, Connie definitely Nielsen. not Connie Britton. I was, yeah, I was that's a Friday Night Live. That's yeah. Nashville. <laughs> yeah. Connie I know, Nielsen. I was going to say American Horror Story. She's from um, Gladiator. Yeah, yeah, amazing actress. Yeah. And 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 so then you, all those, like you even said, even Ewan Bremmer, the sniper. I know all those sub characters that, that show yeah. up kind of halfway through the film, and the, even the secretary. Everybody was amazing. Everybody brought their A game. Yeah, the secretary. Secretary is the main female lead from the UK version of The Office. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> that makes so much sense. Little fun fact for you. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> so, so you know, it's just like the film just really came together for me, and it and it it did so much more than Batman versus Superman, than the you know Man of Steel, than than a lot of the Batman movies, unfortunately. Which you know, again, I love Batman and Dark yeah. Knight, and and obviously Batman Returns stand out to me. But Wonder Woman just did something that nothing, none of these other films were able to do, where they were able to take this historical piece of history and mix a little bit 
bit of, of you know, fantasy and ridiculousness into it, but in a way that you just love, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and Captain America really tried to do that, and I don't feel like they pulled it off, the right. original Captain America. I mean, I, I liked you it. You should watch but... that again, because the first, I, I don't want to go on a total tangent on Marvel, because this is DC, but the, it's just interesting you said that. The first time mm-hmm. I saw the first Avenger, Captain yeah. America, mm-hmm. I didn't like it very much. The more I watch that movie, I like it. And here's what's weird. That film has come up in esteem greatly. It's Maybe now con- watch it again. It's now considered one of the best Marvel movies. No, that's stopped now because I'm going off the rails. <laughs> DC. But that's just interesting you said that. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, we have to wrap up soon. But um, I agree with you completely. Okay. Uh, to me, Wonder Woman uh, is absolutely the best of the dc quote-unquote expanded universe and it's probably one of the best dc movies ever made Mm -hmm. outside of nolan's trilogy i'd put it right up there probably watchman would go before it it. um but it's fantastic i think we all agree it's a great movie and uh, and the cool the music too yeah the music was yeah um anyway wonder woman fantastic okay good so here we go everything culminates to the biggest turd of the century. Uh, you know what? It's actually not Wasn't true. That bad. I, that's what I was going to say. I'm actually joking. I'm not that critical and mean. Justice League <laughs> isn't terrible. Um, it's actually, I'm very, I'm saddened that it's such a bomb. I'm yeah. actually saddened. So Justice League is now the film where they all come together. I mean, you've got Superman, Batman, The Flash, Cyborg, Aquaman, Aquaman that and Robot Wonder guy? Woman. Yeah. Cyborg? Okay. Yeah. So Ray Fisher, who's an unknown actor for me, he plays Cyborg. Great actor. Oh, I don't know him. Um, I don't know him. What's he No, I, I just mean in that film. Oh, I, I liked like him, yeah. Great. Ezra Miller, who's from Perks Being yeah. a Wallflower, is the Flash. I liked him. was a him. highlight for me. I liked him as Flash. Jason Momoa as Aquaman. Now, see, here's the thing. Jason Momoa is Cal Drogo from Game of Thrones season one. He's just all muscle and abs. abs. Again, he's easy on the eyes. I don't really know how he is as an actor um gal gadot as wonder woman henry cavill back as superman and ben affleck as uh as batman now a lot of people thought ben affleck was just cashing in this performance um i don't know i didn't think he was bad uh, he gets so much flack i i didn't think it was terrible there's a bit of a backstory to justice league which maybe you guys know about so Zack Snyder was filming it, had filmed most of it, and then he had a personal tragedy in mm. his in life. Mm-hmm. His daughter died. Mm. So he left the movie to deal with that because he was just too overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Then Joss Whedon took over the film and tried to kind of add some... Joss Whedon did the Avengers, and he tried to add some of that comic element to it. And then at the same time, when he was doing those reshoots, Henry Cavill had already been cast in Mission Impossible 6 mm. as this suave... MI6 British agent where he has a moustache and they made the decision to CGI out that moustache in his scenes and is be- that why his face because is so weird? I knew that I couldn't take my eyes off of it so every scene with Superman <laughs> and I don't I I'm still baffled Stop. that with all the millions of dollars why couldn't they make that look lifelike why why did that look so bad um so it's funny you actually noticed it some people didn't. i didn't even know what it was but i was like something is really I, weird i with did this notice it drove me insane i i couldn't take every I scene with I superman couldn't i couldn't take my finger on it. Yeah. yeah well i knew that which made it even worse yeah so that's one I'm thing that drove me crazy steppenwolf the, the cgi was like a bad old xbox game character to me the villain i don't know why they didn't use a real character i i don't know i did think that that was terrible um the film you could really see the editing was a bit of a mish mishmash because of the two Mm. directors i think that really took away from it the story was a bit kind of all over the place Uh, and you could tell characters um like diane lane who comes back as uh, martha kent and amy adams as lois lane or even um J.K. Uh, Simmons, the fantastic actor J.K. Simmons, he's Commissioner Gordon and he's in it for like two scenes. A second. <laughs> you, you could see a lot of these, a lot was cut. So apparently a lot was cut because the film is short. It's like under two hours. Yeah. So I think that really ruined uh, its chances of being a success. And let me tell you something. That's a pity because the heroes were really a lot of fun. Seeing There's them a lot all together like. was a lot of yeah. fun. Uh, I that that was the best part of the film was seeing them all together their interaction and it actually has one scene that is incredible where Aquaman is sitting on Wonder Woman's lasso of truth so he starts <laughs> criticizing every single one of the characters and he doesn't realize he's sitting on a lasso of truth and then he finally that was real- funny that scene was 
awesome. It was kind of like uh, Age of Ultron when uh, everyone's trying to pull Thor's hammer. That's what it reminded me of, but it worked really well. So I loved the heroes, but the film was just a mishmash, um, which unfortunately took away the enjoyment. I just saw it once. I didn't hate it, but it was just kind of like, ah, oh, what a shame. And uh, it tanked completely. It was critically, you know, blasted again. And, you know, I mean, it's funny because a lot of fans of DC Comics think that, that like all the critics are being like paid off by Marvel. I don't think it is. <laughs> I think they just truly haven't made great films. I mean, critics love Wonder Woman, but uh, it, it's a real shame. What's your take? I I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I'm coming into this movie not having seen Batman v Superman. Didn't know he died. So I'm like, what's going on? Okay, they got to like find this magic box thing to revive him or what? I don't know. No, he was in the I really <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so maybe I'm, but I liked the scene where you have the Amazonian women and they're doing that whole chase right. scene with the box and they're doing the whole like pass the box and... That was cool. That was really cool. From the CGI cool. Steppenwolf, it was like, ugh. yeah. So I think the movie had some good little nuggets, but they did do a just a puzzle piece. They yeah. shoved this piece here. They shoved that piece there. Yeah. Apparently there was like the twelve Flash was minutes. Really enjoyable. Yeah, there was like twelve minutes of Aquaman scenes that just had to get cut out. And I wish the they had done others. more with Jason yeah. Momos- Momoa. Momoa. You know. Momoa. <laughs> <laughs> He's a nice Indian. Snack. She would like to drink him. <laughs> drink that right up. No, I think that they if they had put a little bit more into it made a bit of a longer thing to really develop those scenes that it would have meshed together better. yeah it's a crying shame it really is because the characters i like and i think it would be a shame if they mm-hmm. now recast them all because i think those the characters i don't and think the they're actors going to recast portray, them. well there's a lot of is there a lot of hype about that because the buzz film or... is, is a total bum you know mm-hmm. it's you know apparently what i read is it needs to make about 800 million dollars just to break even the... and it's at mm-hmm. 600 Oh boy. Um, and it's probably not going to stay in theaters much longer. It's been out for almost two Is it two still months. out? Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah, because a movie like They're this, they want to milk it a bit, but I- I'm surprised. I mean, it hasn't even made anywhere near as much as um, Suicide Squad. I mean, Suicide Squad made nearly $800 million. I'm was, just. Also, this yeah. movie cost $300 million. Jeez. Suicide Squad cost like $120 million. All I can say is I'm really looking forward to Wonder Woman 2. <laughs> Which they will do. I'm What's really your excited. take on uh, Justice League, Aaron? So I generally agree with both of the things that you guys have said. And, and I think what's going on with this particular film is that, um, you know, basically like DC, you know, the DC universe that, you know, and Zack Snyder specifically hasn't done a very good job with developing the storyline before you go into the film. So in the Marvel universe, you know, you had the Thor movie, you had the Captain America film, um, you know, you had these films leading up to the Avengers that made sense. All of the Iron Man movies there, you know, there, there was a lot mm-hmm. of, there was a lot of, you know, the standalone yeah. character movies. Exactly. And, and, you know, this movie, you don't know anything about Cyborg. You don't know anything about the Flash. You don't know anything about Aquaman, who's, you know, in, an, in himself has never been portrayed well in film, just like Wonder Woman. So so then you're trying so hard to care about these characters and be interested in anything that they have to say or what they're doing, um, but you don't really know who they are. You know yeah. what I mean? And then, you know, you had the dynamic of, which I thought was really funny, um, Ezra Miller's father is played by um, Dr. Crudup. Manhattan, Billy yeah. Crudup. And um, anyway, Crudup, oh, yeah. Crudup. Crudup? Yeah, see, apparently there Crudup. were more scenes with him. Billy Crudup is what I say. I'm so, so I'm sure it's something else. I think it's Crudup. I think you're right. Yeah, so anyway, and, 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 and so again, like, you know, obviously no one is going to tell Zack Snyder, you know, hey, you shouldn't have taken off because your kid died. You know, that, that was a very tragic thing. And, and it was very unfortunate that he had to leave the project and then, you know, to have someone as amazing as Joss Whedon come in. I'm a huge fan of Joss Whedon. Right. Um, That's you know, why, but really I am surprised. To, like, But he was really trying to pick up the pieces of something that already wasn't, but still, it wasn't really set up for success. I'm sorry, Henry Cavill's moustache is, uh, that is, face, is man. inexcusable. That face, man. I'm I glad know, you told me that because I was, was that? really was that wondering. I, 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 yes, it was. But I just realized one thing that I think is actually interesting. You might agree with me. When you think of Marvel Universe, other than all the actors, there's a name that everyone knows connected to the Marvel Universe. Do you know the name? No. Okay. Oh, um, Stan Lee. No, no, that's wrong. <laughs> but um, but <laughs> Kevin Feige. Okay, so Kevin, Kevin Feige, Feige is, he's the mastermind and producer of all the movies. Oh. So you don't know that, but so I guess I'm a real hardcore dork. Um, <laughs> but no, Kevin Feige is the guy who is kind of responsible for the MCU and all the interconnectedness and putting it all mm-hmm. together. And uh, most 
fan, like hardcore fans, are very well aware of Kevin Feige. He's okay. the he's the mastermind behind it all. DC doesn't really have that, and I I think that's something that's really hurt it. And you said something that makes sense to me, and I think it's even more true with Marvel. I mean, they did they did the Hulk, they did Thor, they did Iron Man, they did they did Captain America with um, Justice League. They did Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice. Suicide Squad and Wonder Woman. Just kind of like random. And then, yeah. Uh, like Super random. Well, they didn't it, introduce those characters. That's what I'm saying. They don't blend have it. that. You're totally right. That really makes sense Individual standalone. There yeah. isn't a mastermind behind DC, and I think that's really hurting it. Really it, quick, isn't Stanley the Superman Stanley is behind comic? Marvel. He Marvel, He created yeah. Spider-Man. He created... So he has you know, nothing Avengers. to do with DC. No, well, we, not at all. Okay. We were talking about Marvel when yeah. I said that. <laughs> okay. But go ahead, Aaron. Sure. You've been wanting to say something. And yeah, you're so, the guest. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, with 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 DC, um, yeah, yeah, there... You're right. There's there's He's not a driving down. force. There's not a driving <laughs> We're breaking force. Breaking him down. Yeah. There's there's not. And 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 it's not. And it's I think because it's really of that. Hurting it and it's it, noticeable. Yes, it is because of that. Because you know anybody, I could have been a consultant on that film, read the screenplay, and been like, this doesn't make sense. What are you guys doing? Right. Why is this here? And I Why feel is arrogant that there? saying that, but it's almost true with some of the mistakes they make with Justice League. And and God, perhaps they're too it. perhaps it's they're too arrogant to look and to see yeah. like, hey, you know, Zack Snyder says we should do it, so we better do it. Like, and, you know, it's like no let's take a step back and really evaluate this. Like, was this smart to right. do this film or have this film come out prior to an Aquaman film yeah. or prior yeah. to a cyborg film? Or a, a or standalone a, Batman, which the Batman. Ben Affleck was going to direct and star in. I was excited for I that. was he actually was Oscar looking forward director. to that. And I, I, think, I think they didn't allow him to do what his vision was. Anyway, here's the thing. So we'll, we'll wrap up on Justice League. We, we, we have to wrap up. Uh, this has been so much fun though, guys. But um, the thing with... Justice League and well, the thing with the DCEU now on the, the back of the fallout of Justice League is it's kind of in a state of confusion. I don't think anyone really knows. Like Batman, there's rumors uh, that Ben Affleck's going to leave the role. We don't really know. He's saying that's not so true. So let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah. So here's what we here's what we do know. OK, um, the last thing I want to kind of end off on is what's upcoming in the DC. Yeah. So what universe. do we have to look forward to? Aquaman is already filmed and wrapped. Aquaman the movie is coming out. There's our Jason Momoa. In 2018. <laughs> yeah, nice Indian snack. Um, so I don't know about He's not that. He's Indian. Film. He's Hawaiian. A samosa. Oh, it's I said mimosa. Yummy, those little yummy lamb okay. things. Okay. <laughs> you didn't get the joke. Our you com- were saying mimosa. Way, yeah. I was right saying, over my head. actually, I think it's a Samoa. But anyway. No, yeah. Momoa. Oh, God. Samoa is a Girl Scout okay. cookie. <laughs> Jason Momoa is starring in um, Aquaman. It's a standalone film. I don't know. We'll see. Um, it's coming out this year. Okay. Um, Wonder Woman sequel. So everyone's definitely... Yes. That's a shoe in well, Patty Wonder- Jenkins is yeah. directing. Go, Pat, hey. Wonder Woman will be fine, no matter no what. No Brett Ratner. They're doing Shazam. Uh, to me, that's Wait, such what? a... Shazam. It's a weird choice. So you don't even know what, what? Shazam is. Uh, that, to me, that reminds like- me of the Doctor Strange decision to do a Doctor Strange film for Which Marvel. So awesome, so by the way. I, think, I, I agree. So I think it could be quite it interesting. Might work. Shazam? Yeah. Okay. yeah, so apparently they are doing okay. a cyborg film with Ray Fisher. Uh, then Joss Whedon has been attached to a Batgirl Which movie. I am super excited about. I, I'd love to see that. It's just Again, it's just a weird choice to me. The Batman has been long rumored, but we still don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I want to see a Batman movie. I actually think Ben Affleck could do it. I actually think if he was given uh, creativity and if he could write it or direct it, I think it might actually make something mm-hmm. unique and special. Agreed. Green Lantern Corps, which I would be excited for. Mm-hmm. That would be kind of cool. Is Ryan and, Reynolds back for that one? No, 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 no. no. Oh, he's okay. Deadpool. That's his franchise. Yeah, he's now. over it. Um, so Green Lantern is. Yeah. Good. And then there is a Suicide uh, Squad sequel, definitely already greenlit. So as you can okay. see, it's a mishmash. Still there isn't is. mm-hmm. any real direction or for the DC Expanded Universe, which I think therein lies the problem. It's kind of in a state of disarray. I think, basically, ha- these movies are hit and miss. I, My prediction is half of them will totally tank and half of them will be pretty successful and they'll probably have some sequels of, you know, specific selected films, which is a shame because I would love to see the DC Universe uh, take off like Marvel. But here's what I think is the problem. What I just said. They're trying to copy Marvel. I think DC needs to figure out their just own break thing. Break away from that, yeah. Figure out their own thing. I think that's the biggest mistake. They don't know where they're going in. They haven't worked out their direction. I'm done. 
Well, Zack Snyder, <laughs> I think Zack Snyder um, thought he was going in a Come different direction. He, I think Zack Snyder thought he was going Ooh, he in a responded. different direction. <laughs> like back in the UK. I feel powerful. <laughs> I was sitting too far back. But, but you know, I, I think he thought he was going in a different direction than Marvel with his several films that he was involved right. in. Man of Steel, Man, Batman versus Superman, and then, of course, um, Justice League. And he didn't quite accomplish it. And and I, I wouldn't be surprised if he just stops yeah. being involved in the series, which at this point is, yeah. is unfortunate. But at the same time, I mean, they, they haven't been great yeah well look, look so we'll, there's we'll been see. some gems there's been some gems let's not it's completely been bash the dc well here's here's what i was gonna say there has we, we gotta some. wind down and actually here's what i was gonna say julie realize while we're debating and we're criticizing some of these let's go back to what we said at the beginning about every movie being a piece of art i, I really do want to make clear to the listeners even the ones that i consider turds <laughs> that's an accomplishment <laughs> i could never do i've never done anything like i've never created that you know, that's hundreds of people working mm-hmm. months to create mm-hmm. these films. You know, the, these special effects, these sets, these costumes. You have to admire and appreciate that. You really do. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I want to, we've got to take it all in stride. Exactly. Because what they accomplish to bring our lazy asses to go sit down on the screen and eat popcorn <laughs> and drink Coke and watch them, we have them to thank for that. You know what I mean? So, so thank you, guys. Yeah, so... I I take it lightly. I don't... Look, I sound kind of frustrated now uh, because some of these things I am genuinely kind of upset and disappointed about. But again, but they're see. just movies. Uh, and what these people have created anyway is their accomplishments, I think, are quite impressive. Wouldn't you agree? I, I do. Agree. And we'll see what comes up next. Exactly. So look, and, and they're going to keep making Marvel, DC superhero movies till the end of the time they will trust me even if there are dips okay look guys um we're gonna wrap up this was a lot of fun um aj aka aaron i loved having you on you were lots of fun thank you so much i just want to comment about how tony is so animated when he speaks and i wish (laughs) trust me i wish you guys could see i wish you guys could see that's why everyone wants me to do this as a video you should you should because you're so in you're so engaged when you're speaking (laughs) and like i feel like i've just been sitting still this entire time but he's his hands are all over the place and just into it i met my match with you you're very (laughs) animated i'm just sitting here back enjoying and of course good old juju no you were involved as always i loved it (laughs) anyway look guys i love having you on uh, your juju you're always welcome thanks Tom. you know you are and uh aaron I, I love having you on so you're gonna when are you flying back to dc literally tomorrow morning oh that's exciting I know. <laughs> good flight I'm, I'm till like, next time <laughs> yeah i have like eight hours of sleep ahead of me if, <laughs> if i'm lucky well, well so. see if you can watch some of the movies on this list. But look, I really appreciate you you coming on. Next time you're in town, you're welcome on, okay? Thank you. All right, thanks so much. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you again for listening to another new episode of Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. A friendly reminder to follow us on all of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Tony the Movie Guy. And you can email us at any time at Tony the Movie Guy podcast at gmail.com. And lastly, my favorite, remember to rate and review this podcast on Apple iTunes. It is extremely helpful for us and we'd really, really appreciate it. Until next week, bye-bye.